Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, freaks of all ages, Freaknet Studio probably brings to you, it is the greatest tag team in podcast history, the original freak travesty, Mr. 33% Dizzle J, this is Just Freaking Wrestling! We are back again with another episode of Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW podcast, hosted by Travis D. I'm Dizzle J. And last week we told you that we were going to have a sit down interview with Hunter Payne, the Hunter Payne that I have had some issues with over the past couple of weeks through social media. But you know what? Huge surprise. Not only did we sit down and talk with Hunter Payne, but we actually sat down with uh, uh, former President Keast, current President Sentinel. Uh, oh, man. Up and comers from the school, as well as you know, uh, the Genesis champion, established veterans, right, and uh, the the ugh, the women's champion from SCW, the the very scary comic Karmakazi. God, it, that uh, I I still can't get over that interview, but you I, know, I still have chills, right? So you guys got to hear all of those uh, here today on SCW or shit uh, JFW. We we didn't buy it yet. No, 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 I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe one day it'll be SCW. One day, one yeah, day, right? One day. right? Uh, I mean, I, honestly, after this interview we had with Sentinel, I doubt he'd ever hire me for anything. <laughs> but no, fun for show. Uh, guys, because of these interviews and everything, this show is a little bit longer than most of our shows that we put out there. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, hold off on the freaking five, the final freaking thought, uh, and the results from uh, WWE uh, Extreme Rules. Yeah, nobody cares about Extreme Rules. Yeah, so that's going to be all pushed off until next week, so we're not going to have to worry about that, because I really want to dive in to uh, what's going on with SCW uh, next week at Meltdown, as well as uh, the interviews we have today. So, uh, Jay, you got the uh, you got the match card I, right I do have you. the match card. So, uh, go ahead. Tell tell our listeners. Tell everyone now out this, there. This is I'm what I'm not have. done. Okay. Tell every listener out there. In the JFW world, tell the freaks what's going down at SCW Meltdown. All right, SCW Meltdown, super excited, a month off to come back, come back strong. Look at this match card. I'm super excited. We have Nick Cutler versus Jay Harris, Yep. which it's still up in the air right now if it's an Indiana State title match or not. Yeah, we, you know, we don't, we don't I, know. As, as, as we're told right now, it's a non-title thing, but that yeah. obviously that can change. That can change. Um. I don't think it's going to be because seeing how Jay, uh, Jay Harris has really been um, avoiding trying to lose that title. I'm I pretty, mean, it could be ARW eh. not wanting him to defend it at an no, SCW you know, show. You know, that's not true. Plus, bonus, this is going to be the first time we see Nick Cutler since the ARW show that uh, we went to a few months ago. Ooh, where he cut that awesome promo. Very heavy promo. Uh, James Creed versus Adam Cage. Trying to get some revenge that we discovered today. Yeah, we, we actually had to sit down and talk with uh, Creed. Creed's going to be one of those guys that we sat with, so that should be a good match. We have Bo Anderson from Bulletproof LLC versus Paradox from the Patriots of Hope. Again, these two have battled many a times, usually in tag team matches. A lot of history there. Oh, man. We have the Genesis title up for grabs. The Sheik taking on the champion, Bain X. Yeah, which uh, when uh, when we left uh, the last show at SCW back in May, I mean, he... he he called him out. He called he called Bay Next for the challenge and everything. And you're gonna find out in the interview like his thoughts and feelings on why, you know, it's his time to stand up for the title. And we do have an ARW versus SCW, Max Baylock versus Santana Starks, who we're both very familiar with. Huge fan of Baylock. Um also a huge fan of uh Starks and everything. Um little little quirky, but I, I don't think you're thinking of the same guy. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think you're thinking of Gino Latino. Sure. No, I remember Santana Starks. He was in the table match uh, out in Clifton for SCW. He's kind of he, yeah, he, he's the one. They get their cause. The uh, yeah, no concept. It's okay. Oh, to okay. Be, yeah, it's okay. okay to be quirky and not flamboyant, oh, yeah, bro. That, it's a difference. I guess he was a little quirky. Sorry, I forgot. SCW fan. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, also appearing: Hunter Payne, Natalie Crane, Natasha, Natasha Crane. Sorry, Natalie's my mom. I'll call you out. I'll call, you know what's <laughs> up, we do. 
Greg Allen, bro. Greg Allen. Greg so, Allen. Like, hey. We're not perfect. Uh, the family will be there. Mm-hmm. Our buddy, Angus McDuff. I don't know why I say buddy. Yeah, like, Just because you have a t-shirt that you could get at tpublic.com just by searching JFW. Doesn't mean we're friends. I mean, it's a good looking t-shirt. It's a pretty sweet t-shirt. And the women's champion, Karmakazi, will be there. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm still terrified. Yeah, we shit. did we did an interview so long ago. It's still I still got chills and goosebumps it, from it, it. it. It's scary, it really is. But also while we were there at Genesis Fit or yeah, Genesis Martial Arts, yeah, we heard a lot a lot of rumor, a lot of talk going around. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we were supposed to hear it, but uh, we did uh, we did hear some rumors about a possible big return coming this Saturday. I don't, I'm excited. Now we that. Didn't get to hear no names, but just hearing big return to me is... Yeah, it was one of the things where maybe we heard too much. Right. Yeah. We weren't supposed to hear anything at all. Exactly. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to hear about this big return. Um, they, they said it's been quite a quite a while since they uh, since this particular person has been there. So I'm really excited to see who it is. Um, but more importantly, I'm really excited to dive back into these interviews that we had earlier today. Oh, yeah, they were, they were great. I mean, we had sat down with numerous people and just... Really hammered some stuff out. Talked to old and new faces yeah. and brand brand new faces. Brand brand. Brand brand. Raisin brand. Raisin brand. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, start uh, start giving you guys these interviews uh, that we had. And one of the biggest, uh, the most uh, controversial. Um, um, fuck what the hell's what's the word? Uh, the biggest controversy right now um, over social media is. Uh, the impeachment of the current Sentinel. president Sentinel yeah. and the the rehiring of uh, former president Keist, which obviously has been um, brought up by uh, superfan Steve, hashtag F Steve, you guys don't know, which he also has a t shirt on the tpublic.com website if you search JFW. So I, it's kind of like fan driven too, and that's it. I mean, Bulletproof Industries has uh, catered to Steve yeah. and some things, taking them out on some jet planes and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you guys are going to listen to the interview. We did have an opportunity to talk to Keist and Sentinel at the same time, just because I felt it was uh, funnier to do it that way. Oh, yeah, it was much more fun. Yeah, so why don't we go ahead and dive into that interview right now, and you guys get both sides of both uh, Keist and Sentinel's point of view on the whole uh, situation, That's as true. well as their thoughts and views on the SCW ARW situation. Ooh. Guys, I'm super excited uh, for this interview in particular because we're sitting down with former president President Keist and uh, current president uh, Sentinel. Guys, thank you so much for sitting here with us today and talking. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for having us, guys. Absolutely, it's about time. You know what? It, it, that's more on DJ. So the thing is, um, we we want to do uh, an interview, obviously, with both of you because of the huge issue that a uh, current fan, Steve. Uh, is playing on Facebook about impeaching uh, Sentinel, bringing back Keith and everything. And uh, I wanted to do it together because I figure it's easier for you guys to kind of uh, respond, um, you know, as you know, as a group here. So uh, I guess we'll start with um, Keith. Uh, how do you uh, how do you feel about the whole movement? First of all, well, I, I think it's justified. Yeah. I mean, it's you can see the state of the the state of the company and the state of the the federation. I mean. Why wouldn't the state of the company it? the state of the company put in my lap by you? I'm cleaning up your spilled soup. When or I stewed, left, if you will. When I left, this was a smooth running machine. When you took over, it was about you... ready to go off the rails right when you left. You knew you had <laughs> driven it to the breaking point, and nobody else knew it but me. And luckily I took it over. And I didn't ask for this position. I was nominated by the entire back room. And when Paradox initiated me, and basically they begged me to become president, they all saw what was going on. Stuff the fans don't see. Well, one of the things the fans definitely don't see is uh, Sentinel at the matches and shows and stuff. So I guess uh, one of the biggest questions they do have is, as uh, President Keith seemed to be... Not president. Ex-president. Sorry. You, who, are, who are you again? T-Trav? What's your name? Did you get first, look, you get his name straight and my name straight, and then I'll get your name straight. Okay. Now let's start over. What do you have to say about it? Why is he even here? 
Well, because he is part of the situation that was brought on Facebook about giving him back his presidency and asking you to step down. Yeah, the only reason I agreed to this interview with him is because I want to prove that I'm not afraid to be in a jousting match with anybody. Let's see what he has to say, then I'll give you what I have to say. What do you want to know? I want First off, I want to know where you've been. He, he, when he was president, he was there a majority of the time. You... I mean, frankly, I haven't really me, seen much. Okay. He's All been right. there more now. Can I lay some things out for you? You've Please. been to more ARW shows than SCW shows. Thank there. you, ex-president well, Keast. I'm glad you, you bring that up. You mispronounced best president. Uh, listen, why have I been to more ARW shows? I kind of want to know that myself. Right. I mean, you, you kind of... When Johnny goes marching off to war, he's not home. And if we had, if we had more fans like Steve Doris sending Dear John letters to their president. Basically, when I'm off fighting the good fight in the trenches, I can't be there. So did everybody who went off to World War II or Vietnam that got a Dear John letter and their ex-girlfriend was with some other guy, like my fans are with some other group or organization, how did they feel? I feel the same way. I'm out fighting the good fight out there. I can't be where I want to be with my beloved fans. He's been with the beloved fans, though. He, he's been there right, almost every it's show. Not obliga- it's his obligation. You know, I had to go into the obligation. lion's den. He sets up with Bo Anderson, legally, ethically, physically, a way for ARW to come and infiltrate our organization and take it over via plots by Bulletproof LLC, who I vanquished over a year ago, and they came back like a vulture lurking in the night finally weasels his way back in and renames his company? Who set up Who set up for that guy to be ousted from SCW? The Sentinel. I set up the match. I was there when he was ridden out on a rail and we thought he was gone. And I admit, he's a little harder foe to deal with than even I suspected. Gotcha. Keith, I apologize for interrupting you. So if I could go back to you real quick and kind of talk to you about uh, when uh, when Sentinel does eventually step down and you do take your place back as president of SCW. What do you mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, what, what do you mean when? You don't want me to interrupt, but you're just saying falsehoods, okay? Let the man talk, but don't put words in anybody's mouth. Sentinel's not stepping down. So right now I got you confused. You're supposed to be the interviewer. Don't make me interview you. You do the interviewing. If, by chance, Sentinel is no longer president of SCW, not going to happen. What do you feel needs to change, and what can you do to make SCW better? I will be more hands-on. Like I was the first time when everything ran perfectly. With your hands in the cookie jar. Yeah, your hands meddling in things that aren't your business. I was there every show making sure that the talent had what they needed to perform their best. Like like your hands on other wrestlers pulling legs off ropes and doing things underhandedly as a president interfering in matches? That's where your hands are. You know, and I'm not allowing. you You know what's really important? Where are your hands now, Keast? Why are you really even here? The most important thing is that I'm there. I'm there, and I'm doing my job. My job was to bring in talent. You don't have a job now. I, you're not president. No, actually, you're there. My job and when right the now, cat's away, the mice will play. My job, and you're nothing but a mouse or a rat, as it were. My job is to do the best at whatever my task is at hand. When I was president, that's when, what I did. When you were. When I'm president again, I will do the same. Just because you're never there doesn't mean... Okay, can, can we... He, he's saying nothing. Do you want the real truth? Because I will give you the real truth. Why, why are you... Can, listen, I'm the president. I don't want you in this interview. Can you just exit stage left, let me talk to these gentlemen, and let me give them, the fans, the full rundown they deserve because you have, you've had nothing to say since you've had the opportunity to speak. You're getting mad? Yeah, you're getting a little aggravated, aren't you? Because you don't have any authority here. You know, maybe it would be easier for you if I left. Because he's obviously excitable. So, well, I'm excitable. I, I, under, I understand. We do um, appreciate you. There, there is a lot of hostility going on. And maybe if you would feel better you know, taking off, I totally understand that. I do appreciate you coming in and taking the time with us. And uh, I have no doubt. I'm sure I'll see you on Saturday. We'll we'll As, set up. Maybe we'll set up another time where we can do this. Absolutely. Without, 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 yeah. You yeah. get you get with me, and I'll see if I can set something up. Yeah. For you yeah. While you you're just, under my control. You just uh, get off on your power trip, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Oh yeah, we'll see you Saturday for sure.
So the air just got a little the air just got a little better in this room, didn't it? The air just got a little, didn't it? Yeah, door slams, and all of a sudden, look at how bright and shiny things are. The doom and gloom are gone. Now we can talk like gentlemen. Okay. Let's focus on a lot of things that Steve accused you of as far as Facebook. Now he states that you haven't been around a lot at the SCW shows. Now you say you've been out doing the best for SCW. What have you been doing for SCW? Okay. Do we have enough time for me to... I'll be succinct. Let me spell this out for you. I started in SCW as an announcer, and I was a damn good one. And from basically day one, Bulletproof Bo Anderson had it in for me, and I don't know why. I did everything I could. I announced every wrestler with every ounce of my being, and I brought them every person out there like superstars. I did my job. He broke my glasses. He got his minions or whatever they are, flunkies on me, beating me down in front of the crowd, and I'd had enough. So what happened? I saw that he was doing that to other people. I saw that he was not a person that we wanted in our organization, and I set up a way to oust him. And I did it as president, or acting president. And Keast was part of that. The problem is, he wasn't gone, as I've said. Like a vampire lurking in the void, he comes back. And I thought I had him gone, and he was sowing his seeds right under everyone's noses. He went to ARW. And believe me, if I had proof of this, he would be being sued right now in court. But I can tell you, my friends, who have given me this opportunity to finally clear the air, I'm at those shows. I had a plan. I went into the lion's den, and they were trying to take over our organization. And what did I do? I brought the fight to them. But I couldn't let people know. It was a covert operation. And when I went in there, and I was going to take their wrestlers for, from them to bring to us before they had a chance to do the same, like Keast and Anderson had set up for our world to implode, I found out that ARW didn't have any talent. I found out that it wasn't worth bringing those wrestlers over to SCW. Well, okay, so so let's talk about that then. The, you said a lack of talent that ARW has. Yes. Your SCW champion lost the title in eight seconds okay. to an ARW star. How does that not Who are we count? talking about? Max Holiday? Yeah, exactly. The former SCW yeah, the guy, champion. Yeah, the, the guy who also... When I tried to tell when I tried to tell Max Holiday that the refs were that the refs were wiped out and that hey I went to tap him on the back and he turns around and Cole cocks me knocks me out I'm a manager trying to trying to bring they they can't even control their own shows we don't have that kind of problem in my organization and I saw that so I tried to step in as some type of an authority figure in the chain of command because their own people weren't doing it Max Holiday is a cheap shot artist okay we know that. And I saw someone like Max Holiday, and I said to myself, I'm going to bring him over. And then I started really seeing him and who, what he was all about, and I said, no. So what have I been doing? Now the cat's out of the bag. Because people like Steve Doris, the super fan, allegedly, who now has been corrupted, okay, has let everything out of the bag, starts bringing up that I've been over there, and what happens? Now they know what I've been trying to do. So now every time I walk into AR, an ARW show, as is my right, per contract, I don't have that cloak of security anymore. I've been exposed by our own fans. How do you think that makes me feel? I'm sure it's not good, but I do want to ask do you. you talk, do you talk, J. Diz? Do you just sit here? I'm, I'm you're here, making I'm me here, nervous, man. I'm here for looks. I'm here uh -huh. for looks. 30, 33%. 33%. So I do want to ask one more, uh, one more thing from you, um, not to upset you in any way. But at the ARW show where Holiday took on uh, Hunter Payne, yeah. I got two questions I want to ask you about that match. First off, we saw Holiday strike uh, Hunter Payne's son. Did anything come about, come from that? Yeah. You know what's come about from that? We take punches. Hunter Payne's son bleeds SCW as, I, as do I. Well, he bleeds period now, so. No. Let me tell you something, man. That was nothing. You think this is all the talent we have? You just got a little glimpse of someone who's being nurtured, who's being brought up nice and slowly. And when he finally rears his head, Max Holiday and a lot of other people will be wishing they'd never even entered the ring, let alone laid hands on Little Payne. And the other question I did have is you mentioned uh, to Keast when uh, he was president, sometimes he got involved and put his hands on the wrestlers and stuff like that. Oh, you caught that, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. What about the match between Hunter and Holiday where Holiday was on the ropes and you knocked his boot and uh, caused him to fall off? I okay, mean, so you're walking by. 
You're trying. You're confused. You're disoriented because because there's total mayhem. They have no control. I didn't know what was what was happening. I was trying to get myself up onto the ring and start trying to take control. And Max Holiday accidentally. I must have accidentally touched his boot. And that's what we're gonna go with. You, what do you want to go with? Something different? What do you, what what are you saying? What are you saying, T. Trav? Travis T. No, yeah, maybe, maybe it was a mistake. I, maybe yeah. I saw something different. Honest mistake. Can you just leave it up to that? Because there's a lot of chaos going on. Was it an honest mistake when he turned around and cold cocked me? Well, no. Oh, wait, so what, what's this? Hold on. Let me let me do this. Let me imitate that. Yeah, that's what you did. So you don't have an answer. Why don't we just let certain things go when it's tit for tat and talk about real issues? Like, what do you do when you get when that prison door slams behind you? When that cell door goes like this, boom, and you're looking at a bunch of inmates, what do you do? You go up to the biggest guy in the room, in this case, figuratively and literally, and you cold cock him right in the face and you take charge. Bulletproof Bo Anderson went after our super fan, Steve Doris, whom I thought this person was untouchable. And to find out now that he's become a traitor, and you've seen it on Facebook, I know I can bring him back. I know I can do it. I've told fans, just because these fans and, and the people following Doris have become traitors against our beloved organization, do not say anything to them, don't harm them. I'm talking about loving them and bringing them back because they know not what they do. And that's where we are today. All right, well, I appreciate uh, I appreciate sitting down with us. I'm sorry if you got a little hot-headed. I just... I well, just, what, yeah, notice, notice it wasn't so bad when he wasn't in the room. You know, listen, guys, anytime you want me to come and clear the air and set everybody straight, happy to do it for you. So starting off hot, uh, there's a good possibility Seto does not like me one bit. Oh, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm kind of sure he doesn't like me too much yeah. either. I just, I kind of wish he didn't, um, you know, kick out one of our interviewees. Um, I mean, we were at the SCW training school. That's true. So I guess maybe he's got more authority there than we do. Yep. I, I'm not sure, but yeah, we were invited guests. That's true. Um, also, I didn't feel that it was uh, right for him to uh, interrupt Keist. So, Keist, uh, I hope you do accept my apology for the way he acted. Uh, big on apologies lately. Yeah. Um, that one sounds a little more heartfelt than the last one. They're they're all sincere. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't apologize if I didn't mean it. <laughs> um, but Jay, tell tell them who we're gonna go ahead and interview next. Oh, so we had Green Green. Green, green, green. 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 Evan Blaze just joined the school, been there for two months, sat down. We decided, hey, let's talk to this guy too. Yeah. Because you know what? What if he turns into the next Rollins? What yeah. if he turns into the next AJ Styles? He remembers. He remembers who had the first interview. The first we exclusive the first interview, interview of Evan Blaze. So, but you know, it's pretty cool because, like, like we mentioned, like through all these interviews, it, it's from veteran to rookie. I mean, this guy, a uh, few months into the business, it's really cool to see how he he has gone so far uh, into the school. Also talking about the school and facility a little bit and all that, um, as well as the trainers and stuff. So if you're ready, I'm ready to dive right into this. I'm interview. ready. Cool. Let's go ahead and show you the first ever interview of Evan Blaze. So here we have, fresh from the training center, Evan Blaze. Tell me how you got to this point, man. You know, ever since I've been five years old, I've watched wrestling from WWF to WCW to NWA. So, you know, I've picked up stuff along the way, picked up moves where, you know, I know stuff. And it was about four years ago I wanted to get involved in this. Showed up here. <laughs> started doing the stuff with the guys. Been here for two months now. I love it. Well, how did you find SCW? Uh, I've been, I was going to their shows. Okay. So, so you, you've been a fan of SCW before you came to school? Definitely. Bit, yeah, definitely been a fan before coming to the school. Gotcha. Nice. Now, from SCW, uh, who's, your, who's your favorite wrestler on the SCW roster? Well, I, I'm going to go with our Genesis champion, Van X. He's okay. So Just okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I mean you got to admit, though, I mean, as, as a wrestler, he's getting kind of up there in age and everything, and... He can still go. He's already, he's, he's put on shows with these young guys. Okay. Right. Bay X, when he steps in that ring, it's all business. There's no playing That's around. I, I'll, I'll give you that. He he does he, he does have the ability to do what needs to be done to maintain the, uh, to retain that title, and he's done it successfully for months. I, I will say, 
Um, I, I have a different opinion on who the best uh, wrestler is in SCW, but this isn't about me. This is this is about uh, about you, Evan. Um, you are you're being trained by, um, from what I'm hearing, is some of the top trainers in the business today. Hunter Payne, Bain X, and everything. How has it been to be trained by you know guys like that? It's been great. I love being trained by these guys. All right. Um, so down the road, when uh, you feel the need to kind of uh, grow yourself or become a better wrestler, uh, you're eventually going to find better trainers, right? No. By far, Hunter Payne is probably the best trainer in the state of Illinois. I, for the basics, I would believe it. but like, No, I'm going to say for the all-around game, Hunter is the best there is. Hands down. Did he pay you to say that? No, he didn't pay me to say that. That is out of my own mouth. I, I believe. I, you know, you, you're the train. You're the train guy, man. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to upset you in any way. And I get it. Is there someone you see in SCW that you think would be like you know your first match? If you were to have your first match in SCW, do you know who you want to go against? Probably the dream match. I'd probably say Jay Harris. Jay Harris. That's a good choice. Yeah, yeah current, Jay Harris the current the Indiana player. State Championship and everything. Which uh, you know, let me ask you. Uh, being from uh, being new to uh, the whole business uh, of SCW, this whole feud with ARW and what's been going on with them. Like, where, what, what is your outlook on the whole thing and how it's been progressing over the past year? ARW, they're a joke. They're a bunch of thugs. They think they can show up to our shows and run it how they want. Got news for them. This is SCW. We do things our way. We don't do things their way. Okay, but, I mean, you got to admit, though, I mean, a lot of the backhanded stuff or the wrong way of doing stuff, I guess, it has been coming from SCW a little bit, too. I mean, we saw uh, Holiday take the title away from Maverick Cage and ARW show, and Sentinel ran off with it. We saw even Sentinel uh, interfere in the Holiday uh Hunter well, Sentinel Sentinel explained that earlier. He was just walking. Let me, I, no, from, let, from his perspective. Let what? me explain that, gentlemen. Max Holiday stole that title illegally. I, I mean, the bell rang. No, man. no. That's because their referee is trash. He stole it illegally. It was taken back. But you know what? It's around the waist of its rightful owner currently, where it belongs. I got you. Okay, so tell us about the facility, the uh, SCW facility and everything. Obviously, it's out, out of Genesis Martial Arts. But what's your, what's your view and perspective on how uh, everything's set up here? I love it because you don't find many places like this where you have MMA and pro wrestling mm-hmm. in one building. Yeah, it is, it is definitely a, a unique type of building. Absolutely. And uh, why don't you tell everyone how, uh, how you're able to contact uh, the school to get, uh, get signed up? Just, you can stop by the school and talk with them. Mm-hmm. Or you can find them on Genesis MMA on Facebook. Awesome. You got, any, uh, you got any other questions for uh, Evan? I, I don't. I, I'm looking very forward to seeing you debut because I've, I've, we've been to a lot of the shows. So we're looking forward to seeing you and talking to you again. And hopefully it'll be a whole different conversation other than training school. It'll be uh, yeah. how you came up and whooped some ass. Yeah, which has been cool because, I mean, we, we, we've we seen uh, we've seen Creed come up uh, from his beginning at SCW to where he is now. Or, um, and he had, he had a chance for the Genesis title himself uh, last month, and that's only within like the few months that yeah. he's uh, been part of it. So it's awesome to, yes, maybe I'm not a huge fan of the veterans so much anymore, uh, but I am a huge fan of watching young talent come up. So as long as you feel that, uh, you know, you you aren't like held back by you know guys who aren't willing to let go, I think uh, I think you sh- you know should have a bright future. Held back how? You know just. Them getting, you know, taking the spots away from the younger talent, you know, who are just not willing to let go of, you know, what was. Well, this, I think you're wrong. This is an interview, not a, not not the show where you're I, just talking. I, to I, 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 okay, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry to give my opinion. I do apologize. But again, um, check out uh, check out Southland Championship Wrestling School, uh, Evan Up and Comer. I'm I'm really excited to see what your future holds for you and everything. Thank you. And, um, yeah, I'm appreciate good. you coming on the show to talk. Thank yes. you, gentlemen. You know, I got to tell you, of all of the SCW guys that we interviewed, it's crazy how the greenest guy seems to have the most passion when it comes to SCW. He, he was very much, very yeah. passionate. And he did mention he was a fan before the before uh, before joining the school and everything. Um, so, you know, hey, I, a lot of respect to him, you know, for keeping that passion and uh, that... Um, Following a dream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's something I tried to then do. So, hey, more power to him. More power to him. More power to him. But, 
You know, let's talk about power a little bit. Instead of a, instead of power, let's talk about pure fucking intensity. Um, and no, we're not talking about Hunter Payne's interview. That's at the end, fools. Uh, probably the most intense guy in SCW is Max Blaylock. I mean, young gun Max yeah. Blaylock. I, I think I coined that phrase today for him. You did. I, so, I think I think that's a, I think that's t-shirt worthy. That is t-shirt that's worthy. Very t-shirt worthy. But I mean, a second generation superstar coming up with his dad in his corner. Uh, yeah. We did touch a little bit on that, and the the kids got it, and I can't wait to see how much further he goes from here. Yeah. And one of the coolest things, like, because we we remember watching him at our very first SCW show we've been to, right? Which was back in uh, 2007, spring, uh, summer, somewhere in 2017. And um, even though he's been part of SCW for almost two years now, he still is at the school learning and honing his craft and everything. So it's amazing, guys. So let's dive into this interview. uh, Get a listen to uh, who Max Blaylock is, and um, you know, just you you guys will understand why we feel the way we feel about this guy and how we do believe he is the next, not only Genesis champion, but SCW heavyweight champion. Definitely. And here we are with Max Baylock, SCW, one of the young guns in SCW. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah, you hope so? Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. I'm just trying to make it. <laughs> yeah, say so, it's a sweet punt. Young gun. Young Got gun. that cowboy theme. Uh, I love that. I like that. Come on, I, I love that. like that. Yeah, I mean, that was maybe, maybe we'll make that a thing. Right. Young yeah, Gun, hey, young good. gun, Max Blaylock. Uh, has a ring to it. Right. Has a ring to it. Second generation wrestler. Yes, sir. That that's amazing. We we do have we've met your dad before. We actually own a piece of his ring gear that we won in a raffle. Oh really? Um yeah. Yeah, don't fit me. But uh yeah. I own it. <laughs> well, it's good just to hang up, you know? Yeah. It, it is. It's hung up like for me to look at every chance I get. Well, but uh yeah, you I mean second generation star and everything. I mean like so how how did you get your start in the wrestling? Is SCW the, the beginning for you? Uh yeah. Uh well as I was like growing up as a kid, I would always go to like the training center with my dad like when he was wrestling and uh I would travel with him to some shows and kinda like get get a feel for it I guess. But he honestly never wanted me to be a wrestler. Really? He uh yeah. kinda wanted me to stay away. But uh, as as I grew up, I just kept watching like uh, like the TNAs and the, the Ring of Honors, mm-hmm. and then Genesis uh, opened up with uh, CSW at that time, CSW Southline, which is now SCW, um, and that's really where I got my stars with Hunter Payne. He's taught me everything that I know now. I got you. Yeah, because I think uh, if, if I and I could be completely wrong when I say this, but the first time we actually been to an SCW show was uh, it was May of June of 2017, and I think. You were in a street fight with uh, Miller, if I if I remember that correctly. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think, so, I, think right? I remember that. Yeah, because I, I think I remember like when I was watching that match. I mean, Grant Miller is I mean he's a pretty pretty tough dude. But watching you in that match and watching you as you've gone through your career, you're probably one of the most like intense guys in the ring. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, because like, I mean I even I tell Dizzle J almost every time we uh, we talk about the matches and we talk about the cards and everything, even post shows and all that, is when there is a next top guy in SCW, it's you. I mean, like, you you, you are that next generation to SCW. Unfortunately, needs to kind of let the veterans step aside so you can move and grow. Uh, nothing against old guys, but, I mean, it's it's fat. Now, th- th- I mean, this is an interview. This isn't... Oh, yeah, my... We're, we're not crapping on SCW <laughs> at the moment, T. I didn't think that was crapping. Yeah, you're well, crapping. Actually, well. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, your career and everything. Uh, you have a match coming up this week. Yes, sir. You are taking on uh, Stark. Uh, believe Santana in a- Starks. Believe from oh. an a- ARW. ARW. So where where do you stand? Because we have seen you uh, help out SCW in this fight that they have had out for over over the past year about you know with ARW. Like where do you stand with this? I mean, why do you feel like this is a fight that you need to be part of? Uh, it's SCW versus ARW. I mean, I have full loyalty towards SCW. Why would I not help them? I'm not going to let some other company run all over my home company and have me just sit and watch. I mean, I'm obligated to help fight. And if I can, you know, bring some intensity and bring a couple of W's into the books, then, hey, yeah. it's better than nothing, right? Yeah, true. How do, you, how do you feel when you go out to the ring that your dad's there with you? I mean, that's got to be pretty cool, Com- right? Comforting. It, it's, yeah. it's very uh, relaxing for me knowing that somebody like that, somebody that's been there for a while, somebody that can help me out and, mm-hmm. and it maybe possibly help me pick up a W if somebody wants to – you know, get cheap like 
the last show. But there's got to be some kind of pressure there too, right? I mean, like your dad's created a legacy, you know, in the area. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's got to be kind of like you know, is do you have that mindset where like these are boots you got to fill, or are you drawing your own kind of uh, history? I don't, I don't so much think it's boots to fill because I don't want to be the next Doc Blaylock. I, I want to be the first Max Blaylock. You know, yeah. um, nice. it's nice, it's nice that he's out there. It's nice that he's he's showing me the way, he's guiding me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but you know, at some point. I'm going to have to go off, you know, be by myself at some point. Uh, and when that happens, I know that he would have taught me the way and, uh, and I'll be my own, my own person. So do you feel like it's easier for you? Like, I know there's a couple other young guys, but you have that guy who's in house to tell you and explain you the way show you different moves. Do you feel like you got maybe an edge up on some of these other younger guys because you have this indie legend as a father? I would I would say that somewhat. Uh, he definitely brings in a new aspect. Uh, you know, watching film, watching it back, showing me what I did do wrong. You know, showing me what I, I can do better to maybe put a more impact into the match. You know, maybe a bigger move, or maybe I just missed an opening that I really could have took. Yeah. To, you know, to get the W faster. It's it's definitely better of an edge than a lot of the younger guy have have. But I mean, they're they're good. Yeah. And, I mean, I, as for me with the, the podcast thing and Travis, he is much more inept in all this and I use him as a background. So Terms better, but yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's better at it than I am. Obviously, you can hear me stumble over my words, but it, it's just nice to have someone where you can talk to and get that extra guidance and stuff like that. So I, I, I feel you in that way with that. But I mean, I, I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. Um, what would you like to see from yourself in SCW itself? Uh, I would like, uh, I would like just honestly to grow, honestly, like to, to see how I've already grown from when I first started till now, how much I've learned in the ring, how much, uh, I'm starting to like, adapt, you know, I honestly just want to go out there and have fun. Uh, I don't really see myself as like, uh, egotistical, I guess. Right. I like to keep it humble. I like to stay down to earth right now. I'm just focused on Santana and ARW. To be honest, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. I think that's the best way so, to go about things. So let, let's say, like at the end of the day, after the ARW SCW thing is you know in the past and it's done, is the Genesis Championship something you look forward to going to, or possibly the SCW Heavyweight Championship? Because we saw last month with Creed, who you've been spending a lot of time with, uh, he had his opportunity and unfortunately he wasn't able to deliver on it. But is that something you can see yourself happening here in the near future? Definitely, yeah. it's definitely a goal. Uh, I, it's definitely a goal to be the Genesis champion at some point or the heavyweight champion. I mean, if you're not out there for championships, then, you know, yeah. that that's the main prize. That's, that's the, the, the big money right now is just trying to trying to make it. You got to be a champion. Yeah. You know? Well, it's kind of like, I mean, like when you when you uh, listen to a lot of interviews and stuff like that, when it comes from like, you know, WWE type mm -hmm. of guys, they talk about the IC title, how it's the workhorse title, how it, like there are points in history where that is almost as important as heavyweight title. Do you see that as being a younger guy, the Genesis being similar in that way? Like, yeah, I mean, obviously everyone wants to be SCW heavyweight champion because that's the, the top of the top, but is it that Genesis title that gets you there, or do you think you can even pass that to become a heavyweight champion without worrying about the Genesis title? Uh, the Genesis title is definitely under, kind of like the Intercontinental title. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody at a show is always like heavyweight championship, heavyweight championship, tag team championship. They fail to realize the Genesis Championship is just as hard as the World Heavyweight Championship. Mm -hmm. There's young athletic guys out there that, that are training 24-7 just like I am to achieve that title. Just like if a heavyweight's training for the Heavyweight Championship or the Tag Team Championship. Not too many people really see the Genesis Championship, but uh, hopefully one day I can bring it to the top where everybody can can love the Genesis Championship. And yeah. they can get excited like, oh, I want to see a Genesis Championship instead of just the heavyweight, you know? Yeah, and it's one of those things, like, you know, there's, there's two different kinds of people in the world. It's either, like, the person makes the title or the title makes the person. I think right now, and yeah, I'm going to say it. I believe the Genesis title is keeping Baynex relevant. I don't think Baynex is doing it on his own. I'll say Ooh. it. Don't care. But I think when it comes to a guy like you, I think if you got that title, that you make it more relevant, more important in the uh, company as a whole. You well, didn't see this when you were interviewing Baynex. He's not here. Yeah. Why is he here still? <laughs> Hey, okay. uh, so before we go, uh, do you have any final words you want to say to your opponent coming up this Saturday or just, you know? Uh, yeah, bring your A game, dude. John Hudson was 
this close. And when I say this close, I'm talking about two inches off my fingers. This close to losing. I almost had him. Don't bring any backup this time. SCW versus ARW, I want it to be mano y mano. I don't want it to be two against one. Bring your A game. Maybe you'll get lucky. Probably not. Hey, thanks for staying down with us, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very intelligent young man. And, you know, yeah. just great to talk to. Yeah, he, he's one of those guys who, I mean, obviously, he, he caught on. And we, we heard it from a lot of the guys at the SCW school, too. Uh, off, you know, off recordings, obviously, is uh, he, he's taken to it so well. Right. But having his dad in his corner doesn't help Todd. It doesn't hurt too much either. Not at all. And you got Hunter and Baynex training you, so. Sure. I mean, you could have worse trainers. Like yeah. Holiday. But Sure. I don't, I don't think Holiday has time to sit there and train people. Yeah, it's because he's busy making La 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 Rue pants. Because he's busy, period. Yeah. But yeah. moving on, yeah, yeah, that's true. we go on to uh, James Creed, who has partnered up with Max Baylock, and who does get a little more, get some insight from Doc Baylock. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Doc Blaylock, he's got two wings, and he just filled them both. Hey, might as well. If you got the knowledge, pass it on. Yeah. Because you're, you're not going to do anything but with it, but with that with it. Yeah. But Creed also had a Genesis uh, title shot. Last month, yeah, which was incredible. You know, and, and he, he even mentioned stuff like, you know, he's only been doing this for a short period of time, and it was even a surprise to him that he got the opportunity he got. But he didn't waste it. You know, he went out there and gave it his all. Yeah, he came up short in the match. But it's still, it was one of those match of the night kind of uh, matches. Oh, yeah. It was def- like I said, like I told him on the interview, too, he put out a hell of a show that night. Yeah. Um, go ahead and enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Listen. Listen to Creed. Hear his story. It's awesome. Here we are with another young and up a cover, James Creed from SCW. Thank you very much for sitting down with us. Thank you for um, having me on the show. Hey, no problem, man. You love SCW. You're huge fans of SCW. We've seen you since you started. It's amazing. Um, how did you get into wrestling? How what was your defining moment to be like? This is what I want to do. Um, I've been uh, watching wrestling since I was three, actually. Uh, watching old WWE, WWF tapes. Um, I remember having a old WCW Bash at the Beach tape. <coughs> and just watching that on replay. Watching Hogan come out and being starstruck and. Ever since that, I knew from day one that I wanted to be a professional wrestler. And here I am, hopefully, carrying me out to living my dream. That's amazing. Is, um, you, you've worked a lot with uh, Blaylock and obviously and everything. Have you yes. kind of taken any advice from like his father and everything? You know, being Doc Blaylock, you know, one of the most well-known guys in the area. I mean, it's got to be pretty cool to kind of have like you know him to help you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um He's passed on some advice to me by not rushing anything and just mm-hmm. taking my time and listening to what the fans want and just always be true to yourself. Don't get caught up in the business. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that, that advice has to be uh, helping out pretty well since uh, you actually had a shot for the Genesis title last month, which, I mean, nothing against you in any way is, is pretty quick you know for you know someone who's freshly into the wrestling business and everything how was that feeling to have that opportunity or to even get you know to have someone come up to you and say hey you got this opportunity it's yours um i guess uh whoever the powers may be president uh sentinel uh he might have liked what he saw at the scw training center and decided to give me a shot with it and i took the most of that opportunity and I ran with it and hopefully there's more opportunities like that down the line. I mean, you did, you did very, I mean, very well in that match with that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, you did come up short, but a hell of an outing. Yeah. We, we sat back, we talked about that match. Um, I believe me and you had a private conversation about that match afterwards mm-hmm. and it was a great match. So there are great things for you to come. I, I do believe that. I, oh, you mean, yeah. Yeah, I... This is, where 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 this is the interviewer, bro. This is the interviewer. But you mentioned you mentioned the SCW school and everything. I mean, how how is training with SCW? I mean, we've heard a lot about the school, but never really had an opportunity to talk to someone who came up in it. Like, what what is that feeling to be part of Southland Championship Wrestling School and to be trained by people uh, such as Bainax and Hunter Payne and all that? Uh, it's amazing. Um, I actually saw an ad for it. 
I was looking for good wrestling schools in the area. I was actually, before I found about found out about SCW, uh, I was actually going to go up to Wisconsin, uh, three hours away, and train up there every okay. Sunday. Um, but this is only 40 minutes uh, from my house, and to me it was a no-brainer. And I'm very thankful for the people that I've met up here. Um, I feel like they're part of, or I'm part of a brotherhood now, and it's an amazing feeling. Everybody up here is super professional, and I can't say enough good things about them. Yeah, well, and that's cool. I mean, I mean, having a brotherhood and something like that is important, especially to have someone like Hunter Payne who really fills that grandfather role for you. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously, you know, when you get trained and everything, and you have like someone like Hunter Payne who is a good wrestler, you know, back in his prime, they um. I mean, when it comes down to, like, the basics, you know, make sure you got everything down you're not hurting yourself, eventually you're going to want to look for someone who can kind of teach you more and possibly even better. Is there someone in the future that you feel may uh, maybe it'll help you with that when um, you kind of go above and beyond what Hunter has to offer you? I mean, right now I'm still learning as much as I can from Hunter, and I don't care what you say. He's a great coach. Yeah, uh... He's a little bit older up there in age, but he can still go with the best of them out there. You saw that with Max Holiday at the ARW show at the Hammond Armory. And okay. I, I saw the match, and I mean, if that's his best, then... They fought to a no contest. They fought to Hunter Wren anyway. But we're not we're not talking about that. We're, we're, we're talking about... Well, let's talk about ARW, and we'll talk about SCW and stuff like that. I mean, you, you have been part of the ARW-SCW situation pretty much since day one. A huge supporter of SCW and everything. Uh, why Why do you feel the need to, first off, even be part of the situation that's arising, but also uh, to have such an allegiance towards one company from the other? Um, well, right now, um, I am just sticking to my roots at SCW, and uh, whatever powers... Uh, may be that have their own beef going on right now. I'm not directly in the middle of it, and I'm there if anybody needs me. And uh, so it's more so for you, and I don't mean to cut you off. I apologize for that, but it's more of a a business decision and a personal situation. Like you yes. don't you don't look at it like they're attacking like your houses. They're making uh, your job a little more difficult to do. Yeah, uh, pretty much. That's what it is. Um, I'm just there to show up and wrestle. Yeah, I'm a pro- I'm a professional wrestler. Mm-hmm. That's my job title, and nobody can take that away from me. Yeah. Well, obviously with SCW, uh, regardless of the issues that they're having with ARW, it has given you an opportunity to wrestle in ARW as well. Um, that is correct. So, you you are as, as you say you're, you're freshly new into the company. Have you had an opportunity to work with SCW when it was under the former president Keith's uh, control? Actually, no, I have not. I came in just after mm-hmm. uh, President Keese uh, was no more, and I don't really know too much about why that happened. But how do you how do you feel Sentinel has done as president of SCW? Do you feel that he's doing the best? I mean, obviously, we've seen some of the things he does as bringing up uh, an SCW Women's Championship, bringing in Brian Cage. Um, do you feel that, you know, outside of all the, you know, social media issues that uh, Superfan Steve has uh, created with the whole <laughs> impeaching uh, Sentinel thing, do you feel that maybe he's not, he doesn't really know Sentinel like he should and the Sentinel's actually doing a pretty good job? I mean, he had to have been doing a good job in order to be put into the position that he's currently in. Um, would I like to see more of him? Of course. Who wouldn't like to see more of mm-hmm. their president of the company? But... As everybody knows, the president can't always be in all 50 states at every single week. So okay. he has to take care of the business. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Now, we uh, we saw you, uh, as we mentioned, we saw you take on Bay Nikes last month for the Genesis title. Right. Um, do you see yourself potentially having another opportunity in the future? Or do you feel you're even ready to have another opportunity uh, coming up? Or do you feel like maybe you kind of learned where you're at and you want to kind of like sit back and try a little bit more? Um, that's actually a really good question. Um, I was very grateful of the opportunity that I was given. 
um, it was kind of an impromptu match, mm-hmm. and I'm grateful for that. And yeah, uh, I did put on a pretty good showing for being one of my first. Put on a hell of a show. Thank yeah. you, I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I came up just short. It made me take a step back and realize um, that I'm not at Baynox's level right now. Yeah. But that was what two months ago, mm-hmm. and I already feel like I'm a hell of a lot better than what I than when I stepped in the ring with Baynox. So I would love to get another opportunity at Baynox for the Genesis title. And then next week we have a match coming up uh, versus Adam Cage. How do you feel about that? Um, Adam Cage is relatively new to SCW too, I believe. Yeah, um, I actually had my uh, first match in SCW uh, against him and Andy Black, uh, with of course Max Playlock being my tag team partner. And I'm gonna be honest, it was my first match. I had those first match butterflies, mm-hmm. and I got my ass kicked, and I won't pay back on. Exactly gonna do that. And then you also gotta worry about that uh, bulletproof LLC might be out of the next side also, so you might catch yourself in a one on three. Ah, uh, that's not true. I have the Death Ride backing me up. I have Doc and Max gonna be out there with ringside. Nice. It's a good, it's a good team to have. That's, that's, a, good, I mean, that's, a, that's a hell that's of a, a team, team to have backing up, the spot. Yeah, especially yeah. you know, bulletproof. It. That's why I went out there and helped Max when he was getting beat down by Mikey Wilde a couple shows ago mm-hmm. and he he extended the olive branch and forgave me for losing our first tag team match and he invited me to join the Death Ride and I needed to take that opportunity. Which I mean it, and it's like we mentioned earlier, I mean having a guy like Doc there to kinda of help, you know, two young talents, you know, grow, it's only gonna benefit you. Is there anything you would want to say to your opponent this coming Saturday before we wrap this up? Um, Adam Cage, you got the best of me on my very first match back at the beginning of the year. Dude, you have no idea what I'm capable of now. I am a completely different beast than you first stepped into the ring with, dude. I'll see you Saturday. You know, eventually down the road, I think I mentioned it a couple of times uh, in past interview or past uh, shows, even in like some of these interviews. Eventually, the old guys are going to step aside, and when they do, uh, I think Blaylock and Creed are going to run this show and become the top guys in it. I, I think to put some of these old guys, as you say, out well, you is going to be too. hard. You just said it too. So I mean, I did my air quotes it's for everybody podcast. listening. He didn't really do air quotes. I did do it. He quotes. didn't do air quotes. <laughs> I mean, season veterans would have been better, but no, you went with old guys, which is the correct uh, term. Whatever the case may be, season veterans, old guys, air quotes. No air quotes. <laughs> but yes. It's, it's going to be hard to put away, and one such guy is Bane X, the Genesis champion at the moment. Longest reigning. Not sure if it's true, but I'm saying it. Yeah. Well, he, he was afraid to say it because he didn't want Lunatic to come back out, which you'll hear about. Yeah, absolutely. So... Hear his story. Let him talk to you. He is very we passionate. We're diving into Bay next next? Oh, Bay next. Bay next. Bay next. next. Bay next next. Bay Boom. next next. And he's very passionate about his uh, charities. We do, yeah, we do talk about the charities and everything. That was, that was one of the biggest things we wanted to make sure of. You know, outside of being, you know, Patriots of Hope, outside of being the Genesis champion, um, one of his, one the most, the, the most, the most pride he has in this company is giving back and helping the community and stuff. And he does that every, not only every single show, but almost every single day. He's doing something to make the community better, no matter what charity he wants to be a part of. So, yeah, guys, enjoy listening to Bain X, the current SCW Genesis champion. All right, guys, we're sitting here with the longest reigning SCW Genesis champion, Bain X. Sir, I, I appreciate uh, you being here. Oh, uh, I hope that's right. When Lunatic was the first champ, and I think he had... Longest reigning. No, it's longest reigning. I'm going to call it. Well, all right. I don't want to upset the Lunatic if he hears this, but okay, I, I'll take that. He, he, he had to come back <laughs> on retirement. You, you know what? You never know. Yeah. He might but, come back and I'll take my title. Right. Never say never. You never know. Right? All right. But, hey, uh, uh, we... Uh, we were discussing uh, earlier in the show about the match card for SCW, and we see that you are taking on the Sheik yes. for the Genesis title. And 
over over the months, you know, that you have been champion, you know, we've seen you take on so many uh, competitors. Uh, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Uh, just real quick, I just want to know, like, who do you think so far has been your toughest competitor uh, for the Genesis title? Wow, that's a tough one because uh, every match takes a little bit more out of me. Uh, when I wrestled my partner, Paradox, you know, we didn't let anything get out of hand, you know, but we told each other, it was like, I'm not going to take it lightly. Yeah. You know, you want my belt, I'm not going to let you take it. This is what you do. And, um, we did everything we possibly could to uh, make each other feel like we're, you know, we're not in there playing games. It was, it was a hard fought, fought match. Um, the new kid out, out there, out there uh, James Creed, we had a really good match. Yeah, yeah. Kid, which uh, uh, now James Creed was, now he was the competitor that you took, uh, that stepped up when, um, because originally you're supposed to face Andy Black. Yeah, that's that's uh, something that uh, behind the scenes something was going on. Yeah. I don't want to dive into details no, but, about yeah, that, I, but yeah, like James stepped up, and uh, I, t- I tell you what, you know, he's really green in the business, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, he he did a he gave me a run. You know, he's he could probably run <laughs> circles around me. You know, yeah. I just turned forty six this week, and uh, I like. I like uh, showing the young kids, I don't want to say punks, but some of them are punks, um, that I can still go and uh, don't take me lightly because you know, it's only take one turn. Uh, you might feel a spear. You might you might feel the stampede. You never know what I'm going to hit you with next. I, mean, I might have something new for the sheep next Saturday. I, I would love to see it. You know, it was one of the cool things, as you mentioned, like, you know, the, the younger um, uh, guys in SCW because, I mean, we, we've watched SCW for over the last couple of years. Obviously, we haven't yeah. been uh, here from day one, but from what we've seen, uh, you guys do have a nice blend of, you know, uh, the new, the younger uh, talent, as well veterans. as, you know, the veterans and stuff yeah. like that, which is pretty cool to, when it comes to uh, being Genesis champion and you holding the title, mm-hmm. it shows people that you don't have to, you know, be young to, you know, be on top. And you've proven that, you know, every time you go out there to find a title, even when, it looks like, you know, you may be down and out. This may be the final match as you champion. You do come back, and the spear out of nowhere is probably one of the most intense moves that I've seen in SCW. Well, yeah, I, I, I came up old school back mm-hmm. in the late 90s. You know, just, you know, they were people that I watched and wanted to do uh, uh, emulate and whatever. Well, obviously, one of them was, you know, a lot of people in this time and day probably don't really like him, but Goldberg, just his intensity. Might not have been his wrestling skill, it's just the intensity and stuff. Mm-hmm. He was no, no, no BS behind anything he did. You know, you know everybody knows. Yeah. The story behind him and stuff, but um, that was just one of the things that I wanted to, uh, that I felt uh, growing up when I played sports. I played football, baseball, and it's that, that intensity when you're out on the field. You, if you don't feel all spazzed out and you don't get, like The Rock says, you don't feel goosebumps when you're standing behind that curtain in the gorilla position waiting to go out, then you're not, you shouldn't be here. Yeah. And I feel it every time. And I feel it right now just talking about it. I, really, I take too much emotion. You know, that might be my downfall eventually, but that's who I am. And, um, with, you know, the kids that we help out, uh, organizations that we help out. Yeah, tell us, uh, tell us about the organization for uh, this month's show. This month, we are helping out a foster uh, program here in town, Lutheran Child and Family Services of Illinois. Um, typically, me and maybe one other person within the organization, we, we try to line up different things. And this one came about from a friend's wife. She said, hey, I've seen this on TV. Uh, a bunch of foster kids getting placed at home with these bags and these or new items of clothing and stuff. I said, well, I'm going to find one here in town. There is one in town, and sure enough, there's there's a couple of them, but this one stuck out. Uh, this one about family and friends that actually adopted and fostered from this organization. So I reached out to them. They're on board. Now, as far as what we're going to do, per se, I know we're raising donations like we do every show. It's all donations mm-hmm. you know, by our fans, by the wrestlers. Some of the wrestlers give what they're paid to the or- to help out the organization who are helping out at that show. So, oh, that's awesome. And, it, and you know what? You know, it's... The pain in the wrestling industry, the indie is a lot, but when somebody, they travel, they come to wrestle at our show and they give up their pay for a charity, that's awesome. So, that, that, that is amazing. I, I have seen that with 
working with you guys behind the scenes and certain wrestlers do give up their pay. Yeah. And to me, that that's that's amazing. We donate as much as we can when yes. we're there to split the pots and Not stuff like that. I've been out there. I've yeah. been out there shaking the cans. You yeah. Know? It, you know, it, it's a fun thing to see the different people that consistently come to our shows and are always willing to help out. So that's, I guess that's a good thing. They keep coming back. Yeah. Whether it's the wrestling or whatever organization we're helping out. And every show, there's somebody new that's associated with an organization that we're helping. And, and most of the time, they keep coming back for the next show just because they enjoy the show. So. Well, we, um, obviously, you know, uh, Baynex, Paradox, Patriots of Hope, you guys, um, every time you go out there, every time you step in the ring, you guys are always accompanied with like a USA chant, a very patriotic uh, yes. tag team as far as a huge fan base that supports you. So it's got to be pretty intense to face someone like the Sheik from a different background. Is there a, is there anything you would want to say to the Sheik or uh, any final words before your match next week? No, me and the Sheik, we're not strangers by all means. We've, uh, I was trying to go through my uh, history and see how many times we've wrestled and faced each other. It's, we've had at least five or six matches mm-hmm. over the past two, two plus years. And... Um, you know, whether what combination of the unholy alliance he's got with them, um, obviously they're always up to no good, cheating, you know, typical chic fashion. And but um, I tell you what, if he didn't have that, if he didn't have the unholy alliance with him, he's still somebody to reckon with because yes. he's old school, and you know what, and he's not gonna, he's not gonna pull any punches. You know, he'll, he'll poke you in the eye, he'll rake your back, he'll choke you and nobody's looking. And I expect that. You know, am I going to have to fight fire or fire at July 27th? Maybe. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see because um, he's he's thrown everything at me that he's had over the past couple of years. I've thrown everything that I've let him know I've had over the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. So there's, there might be something new that he's not going to expect from me. Saturday at Meltdown. So, yeah, um, which is cool because, I mean, like especially like you said, when you face somebody so many times over X amount of years, it's always good to, um, you know, evolve and, you know, do something new so they're not used to uh, the, the match that, you, that they expect that you to have. I got two more questions for you, yep. and then uh, we're going to let you go. Yep. Um, so we've seen a lot on uh, social media and everything uh, about the issues that uh, a certain fan has with, President Sentinel yeah. and stuff, and this whole movement on bringing Keats back. Right. What's your thoughts on the current president and the idea of President Keats coming back into power? Uh, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, I've had a lot of history with both his industries. Mm-hmm. Uh, when both he was rolling with both, especially. Um, I uh, one, of the, one of the last matches, I was also wrestled both for the title. But um, uh, maybe it was a year or so ago we had a match, and he was using his kid, his picture of his kid, yeah. as to try to get back in that CW. You know, I was pulling at my heartstrings a little bit. You know, after the match, I, you know, President Keast, but I still want to let him back in. And he begged and begged. And, you know, I, I took the mic and it was a heartfelt little uh, compliment for our bullet group to be trying to get back and support his kid and stuff. Little did I know, it was all a scam between him and President Keast. So when they showed their true colors, you know, using a kid, to yeah. try to further your career, using using that, that really uh, made me feel a lot different about Bullet Group, and it hasn't changed. Gotcha. And uh, obviously you're no stranger to the situation between SCW and ARW and the problems that they've been having over the past year. Um, what's your thoughts on uh, some of the actions ARW has taken against SCW, as well as some of the things that, let's say, President Sentinel running off with a title that was lost to Holiday, or, you know, the fact that sometimes the referee may count a little bit quicker than normal. Right. Um, I still want to get involved with this uh, this cross-promotion uh, invasion and stuff, but uh, I keep my personal life pretty much intact. You know, I'm not out running around wrestling every weekend. Mm-hmm. But, like, my mind thinks I can, but my body says I can't. Yeah. And, but but uh, it's, it's an intense situation. I've... When I, usually I'm out in the show watching with the fans. When these different attacks keep happening at our shows, and it, it's it's almost like holy cow, what's going to happen next? Because yes. chairs are flying. <laughs> it gets pretty intense, and I get a kick out of it. I 
to, you know, me personally, I want to be right there in there with the guy and go through with the SCW Army. Um, and I will. If they if anything ever happens with me and an ARW person, there will be hell to pay. But they're not going to jump me or do anything to me in my own yard. That's how, kind of really how I think about it, and that's how I feel about it. And um, I wish them luck because they're not going to take over SCW or uh, get one over on us anymore. Hey, I, I appreciate you sitting down and talking with us. Thank uh, you very good much. Luck, uh, good luck on Saturday against the Sheik. Um, from what I've seen over the past, you know, title reign you've had, uh, I have no doubt that you should come up on top. Well, yeah, I hope so too. Um, I don't want to let that title go yet. I'm not ready. But I like walking around with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. So not only did we get a chance to sit down with Bayon X, the current SCW Genesis champion, but we got to sit down with his opponent too, the Sheik. The master of the unholy alliance, right? The leader of the unholy alliance, yeah. The Arabian Sheik. The Arabian, yeah, that's true. Hey. He, he wasn't happy with uh, missing the Arabian. No, I was, yeah. he was not happy with yeah. me at all. Well, obviously, from the uh, goofy shoes, it's kind of a dead getaway, right? Of the Arabian thing. Uh, but yeah, no, we got to touch base a little bit about um, his journey into becoming the number one contender for the S- uh, SCW Genesis title. But also, we kind of talked about some of the uh, the pitfalls and everything of the unholy alliance and people, you know, pretty much abandoning him. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to like Paradox or Natasha Crane. I mean, <clears throat> old Pointy Shoes is uh, pretty passionate about his Unholy Alliance. I don't yeah. want to say gang, but group. Group? Yeah. Faction? Maybe. Let's dive into uh, the Sheik. Arabian Sheik. My bad. All right, we're sitting here with the Sheik from SCW. How's it going? It's Arabian Sheik. Arabian Sheik. Pardon me. Many, many apologies. So far, so good. Thank so you. far, so yeah. good. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Um, I, I appreciate you sitting down with us, talking with us and everything. Uh, obviously, you have a huge uh, match coming up next week at SCW as you take on Bayonet, the Genesis champion. Uh, arguably, probably the best Genesis champion that they've had so far. Um, first off, I, I want to I talk a little bit about, um, about some of the history that you have with Patriots of Hope and everything. Obviously, uh, Paradox being one half of Patriots of Hope used to be part of the Unholy Alliance. Um, can I just give me a quick rundown on, like, how, how what, what went through your mind when you found that he uh, he kind of turned on you? I had so many plans for Paradox, so many plans. He could have been the greatest at SCW next to me. But just like anything else, he falls to America. He feels sorry for America. Mm-hmm. America is his home. Mm-hmm. And so he hooks up with Bain X or hooks up whatever. How you Americans talk? I'm talking your language. And now they're a team, mm-hmm. Patriots of Hope. And I keep telling them year after year, all hope will be lost. You know, I like that. I, all I, hope is lost. That is perfect. But you know what? Um, a lot of people feel that even though you lost Paradox, you gained um, a, a great allegiance with uh, Angus. Um, now, obviously, I'm not really a big Angus fan. Um, he claims to be cool, obviously not. But how how has uh, how does your relationship with Angus been working out and everything? Has has he been a good substitute for the powerhouse that is Paradox? He's not a substitute of Paradox. He's the greatest. He's the Irish living legend. Angus McDuff has been a legend for years, and he's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. Behind, I'm supporting him in everything that he does, and you'll see nothing but great things out of Angus McDuff, the living legend, the Irish living legend. Okay, and then obviously when it, when we talk about the Unholy Alliance. We do have to talk about the uh, the big uh, upset from a uh, couple shows ago, Natasha Crane and uh, her decision to no longer uh, side with you guys. You kind of want to give us an idea of what happened there and what uh, what's your mindset after the betrayal from uh, yet another Unholy Alliance member? Natasha Crane, she broke my heart. I had so many plans for her. I believed in her. I believed in her when no one else did. And now she's on the other side. Well, that's fine, Natasha, if you're listening, because I'm coming for you. Don't think I forgot about you. After I become the Genesis champion, you're next. I'll get rid of you. I promise you. You know, let's, let's talk about the Genesis championship, because obviously it is uh, the, uh, the second tier uh, championship in SCW. Uh, how did this match come about? I mean, obviously, again, we do know about the history, but, I mean, you guys were kind of away from them for a bit, and now it's kind of coming full circle again. Where did this title match come out of? I've been with Southland Championship Wrestling for three years, and I learned in this great company of ours, you got to take. They keep telling me, they kept telling me the last three years, your time will come, your time will come. I took this, I challenged him. 
I challenged him because I defeated him before in the past, and I know this time I'm going to defeat him, and I'll become the Genesis champion. Mm-hmm. So making but your own opportunities. That's what I'm doing. And can I, can I tell you one thing? After I become Genesis champion and destroy Baymax, I'm going to make it the Saudi Arabian championship. Uh, it, that'd be a lot of heat from fans, though. I mean, that's is that something you're ready for? I mean, you, I mean, you're right now. You're not really very uh, favored when it comes to the SCW fans, which is weird too, because uh, through this whole SCW ARW feud, it has been shown and proven that you are an pretty SCW much an SCW guy. guy, which blows my mind. Uh, seeing you know from the outside is why why waste your time trying to fight a fight that. Really, it shouldn't even be yours. Three years ago, I was going to hang up my boots, and I was going to retire from professional wrestling. I wrestled all over the country. I wrestled all over the world, collecting championships and championships. I said, what else could I could do? I was going to walk away from professional wrestling. Then I walked into Softland Championship Wrestling, and I saw this company, and I wanted to be a part of it. All the great things that comes out of this promotion, even though I don't like half of the locker room, I don't like anybody in the locker room with the exception of Angus McDuff. This is a great company to work for. And it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm going to become a Genesis champion, and it's going to get even huge. But isn't there some kind of fear from the ARW side? I mean, like, they, they hold quite a bit of uh, victories over SCW, as well as, you know, you have Holiday, who is probably That's undoubtedly cool. one of the most toughest guys in the industry today, especially in the Midwest. I mean, like, isn't there that slight fear that maybe you're backing the wrong horse? Max Holiday is a joke. ARW is a joke. And they're going to fall. That much I can promise you. And not to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, but you and Angus have had many opportunities against ARW, and as much as I hate to say this, have fallen short. What, what do you see as the game plan going forward with against ARW? The powers that be of a Southland Championship Wrestling have haven't had a lot of meetings with me. And payback is coming. ARW is gonna fall. That's what I like to hear. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> One final question before we let you go. Uh, there's been a lot of, and I've asked everyone this, there's been a lot of rumors and speculations about uh, the president of the company. Uh, a lot of people want to see Sentinel go and they want to see President Keese come back. Uh, where where do you and the Unholy Alliance stand on the idea of um, Keith's coming back into power. Sethano, he should be impeached. I've had history with him in the past. Get him out of here. He's yeah, as far as Patriot as a hope, he was really against you guys for a long time. It was really personal between me and something. I got you. Is there any, any final words you want to give Baynex before your match coming up on Saturday? Baynex, you be ready because I'm coming for you. Had that title ready for me. I'm becoming the next Genesis champion. I'm sorry. And I'll, and I'll become the next Saudi Arabian championship. The first Saudi Arabian champion in Southland Championship Wrestling. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And after the Sheik, we, we do know that certain people have left his uh, organization, the Unholy Alliance. Yeah. Like our next interviewee, the P- Paradox. Yeah, which is one of the, one of the biggest like you know surprises from, from my perspective of SCW. I, b- I believe I saw you mark out when he it was, decided to change. It was, it was the test when he ripped off the, uh, the the heel mask and showed that patriotic mask. It was, it was badass. And you know what? I, I like Paradox. I, and like You're going to hear it in the uh, the interview. Um, he is definitely one of our favorites. Patriot Hope is one of our favorite tag teams. Oh, definitely. So, um, again, super big into helping everybody. Yeah. Uh, charity work and all that. And yeah. You guys are going to hear it. Uh, you're going to hear why he was even part of the Unholy Lines to begin with. And also how his life has turned around for just being part of uh, Patriots Hope and Bayonet. Right. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and give a listen to Paradox. Guys, earlier we uh, sat down with Bayonet to talk about his match with uh, the Sheik. We um, we talked about uh, his um, his history with Patriots of Hope. Tyler if Ryan. if we're, you know if we're gonna talk about Patriots of Hope, why not get the other side of Patriot Hope too as we sit down here with Paradox. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I, well, you thank know, you. I, I'm, I'm happy to have you here. Uh, we love talking to, to independent wrestlers, uh, both from SCW and ARW. Uh, so, Paradox. Or SCW. There you go. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, first up, I want, I want to talk about uh, Patriots of Hope and everything. Uh, this this whole situation right now, going into Saturday with Baynex, uh match, he's facing a guy that you have some history with. 
both as a team and kind of against. I mean, like, yeah, we've had, uh, we've been out, I went up and down the road with uh, the sheep quite a bit. That mm-hmm. was uh, a little bit darker times for me. I was coming out of uh, situations in life and he happened to be there at the right time and he needed a little backup. I needed a little bit of money. It worked out for the best. That's probably the not the, probably not my best decisions in mm-hmm. life, but it did bring me to the Patriots of Hope, which yeah. I am thankful for very much. Yeah. Which I mean, I regardless of my views and opinions between SCW and AOW, Patriot of Hope is one of my favorite tag teams in all of independent wrestling because not only are you guys veterans of the ring that can still deliver and show people what you're capable of doing, you guys do so much for the community. Um, yeah, you know, um, I wish I could do more, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, Baynex is out there um, beating the road up up and down. I mean, every everything he possibly can do for, from kids with cancer to yeah. veterans, um, it, it, it's phenomenal. And I'm glad he's allowed me to ride along with him yeah. and, and help as much as I possibly can. Um, in the future, I see a whole lot more. Um, coming out of my, at least from my side, I don't know if he can give much more because mm-hmm. the man gives everything, his blood, sweat, and tears, and everything he's got. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> well, you guys, uh, you guys actually had a match for the Genesis title a few months back and everything. One of my favorites. It, it, it was one of yeah. the greatest uh, Genesis title matches I've seen in a long mm-hmm. time. How were you guys able to have that match and yet still maintain your friendship? Because that's got to be really hard. I mean, I'll be, I mean, obviously, him still being the champion, you didn't he came out on top of that? But how I mean, how were you able to kind of like get over the fact that you lost that match and you're still able to tag with them and kind of like let that go? It's uh, it's a brotherhood for me and him. It's it's plain and simple. It was two brothers getting in the ring. Mm-hmm. He had my toy. I wanted it. Well, he just that was a better man that day, and uh, I, I couldn't hate him for that. I mean, yeah. that's right now he's got the gold and he's the man to beat, and we're all here to win gold. No matter any, what anybody says, we're all here for the gold. The Genesis title is is my stuff. That's what I wanted. And we had sat down, and I'm like, listen, brother, I, I challenged you, and I'm going to give you what I, I, I everything I got. And I said, I don't want you to do anything less than give me 100% because I need to know where I, I, I fit in. And I got his back 100%, and there may be a day that um, we uh, – we have to fight again for that title. Um, that's for the powers that be. Uh, I told them I was done with that match. We walked out and yep. shook hands, and, and that was cool. Um, going down the road, I'm hoping he's, he's, he's the champion for a lot longer. It's, all, it's always great to see that. And you don't see it a whole lot where two tag team partners actually fight each other and still stay a tag team. Yeah. So that, that, that was awesome to see, especially since, like you said, we are huge fans of you guys. And you guys are such crowd friend. Like, it's just amazing. The kids love you guys, so it's great to see that you guys can still. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's, it's it's one of those things. I mean, I was surprised to be honest with you because we're all out there for the gold, and yeah. and I wanted to make sure there was no animosity on his side. It was never going to be on my side, and and I knew right there at the beginning of the match, and at the end of the match, we're still there. That's we're still awesome. strong as can be. Sad thing is, is he's got the belt and we haven't been able to tag in a while. Yeah. We need to get out there and tag, but he can't run two, you know, two matches in a night, and uh, it, it'd be hard for him. So yeah. I, I figured uh, I let him do his thing. I'm gonna be in his corner 100. Uh, percent Whether it be, hey, I can't get out there. I got a match in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Right. I'm next on, so I can't be out there with your brother. Yeah. But I'm out there in spirit, and we're gonna make sure nothing bad happens to him. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of matches, uh, Bane X isn't the only one with. Uh, with a match coming up next week, you are actually in action as well, and you're taking on yet another rival of uh, that is uh, Bo Anderson. Yeah, you know, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, last month, I had one of his people, his followers, I guess you'd say, and sure enough, he pays another guy to come out and attack me from behind, some big galoot. I don't even know the dude's name. Don't want to know the dude's name. They gave me a choice to fight that man or any member of, what was the, the fan that said on Facebook? Oh, <laughs> it was Bulletproof LLC. Lousy little creeps. Kind of fits. They like nice. to creep in the rain, and they like to pull tricks 
to win matches, mm -hmm. not a one-on-one -on -one match. So they gave me the opportunity. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to go for the head of the snake because the body just follows where the head goes anyway. I take the head out. Problem is, is at this point in time, we're dealing with a two-headed snake when it comes to Bulletproof Bo Anderson and former President Keith. And my problem with that is he wants to get back in power. And his little shaggy, whatever goatee he's got coming off the top of the, uh, off, off his chin, he jumps up on that ring one more time. It's not going to be there much longer because I might either rip his head off or maybe just rip his goatee off and defeat it to him because I'm tired of the cheap shots coming towards myself, towards my partner. Towards everybody else. You want a one-on-one -on -one match? You want to see what kind of man you are? Meet a man one-on-one -on -one in the ring. Let's see what we got. Absolutely. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Let me ask. Let me ask you two more questions before uh, we let you go here. Uh, you did mention uh, Keats and his uh, Keats and his, uh, his his winding back in power. How do you feel about the movement that this super fan Steve put forth on social media? about impeaching Sentinel and reinstating Keith. Like, is that something that you're 100% against uh, through a personal feeling, or is it more of a business-related? See, and, and, and people are going to feel it because the Sentinel has been with Patriots a whole, I, I'm, I'm siding with him for this reason. Um, fans, and even some of us wrestlers, don't know what goes on behind, door, behind closed doors. Um, the Sentinel has been trying to fix what Keith has messed up over a couple of years. And I know Steve is 100% is, is because he thinks that's what's best for um, SCW, that he wants Keys to come back. But the problem is, is all the corruption that Bulletproof and Keys has proven in the back, or in the past, I should say, mm -hmm. um, doesn't d d does not make me feel well. I want what's best for SCW. And I, I it's just kind of weird that I see somebody with a lot of money backing President Keast or former President Keast, and it kind of scares me because I want SCW to succeed. I don't want it to be deemed some hole where you can, you know, just crawl off into. If you're, if you're not with that group, you're not going to be anything, and that's what I'm afraid of here. SCW is what I want to succeed, yeah. and I'm afraid that the ARW, SCW, Somewhere in the background, maybe Bulletproof has got something to do with that. Maybe former President Keese has got something to do with that. I'm not sure. Um, I think when it all comes out, it's going to, time will tell. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and that's the other thing I did want to bring up is the situation between ARW and SCW. Um, <clears throat> Bay Next mentioned he wasn't really involved in a lot of the, uh, the, the heat between the two companies. Um, what's your thought overall on the idea of these ARW guys coming here, SCW guys going there, and how it's really been building over the past year, where it's almost become more personal now between Holiday and uh, Hunter, or between Harris and Allen, and stuff like that? Well, you know, it's, it's, again, it's, it's kind of funny um, that all this is coming to a head after, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, just putting this out there, after Keith left office, all this stuff started coming to happen, and they kind of snuck in and were like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, what happened here? And then we're going over there trying to figure out, hey, you're challenging us. They got some kind of legal binding contract that some of us do not even know. They're, we're just told, you're going over there to work. You're going over there to do what we tell you to do, because yeah. like I said, um, all the, the closed door dealings that are happening, and the, and, and the politics is it's, it's crazy, I, and I know it is, and I'm, I'm hoping that we get Everybody gets an answer to ease people's minds because they keep saying the Sentinel is, is being sneaky and not showing up for shows. Well, he's got to be in meetings and he's not the only, he's got to answer to a board of directors and everything too. So, I mean, if he's always in a meeting and he's always getting his hands tied by legal orders, what is he going to do? That's what happened when we brought in somehow one of their refs is going to manage, our, you know, come into our house and say, no, you're not refing that match. Here's a legal contract saying, this guy can ref our match. So they take one of our ref's matches, uh, you know, wait, wait a minute, that's not right. So we're still trying to figure out the legal ramifications of this. I'm hoping that everything comes to a head real soon so we can just get them guys out of here because 
it's, it's like a cancer growing, and we need to make sure we're dealing with the cancer in the proper way. Gotcha. Any final words or anything towards your opponent for this coming Saturday? All I want to say is one-on-one, uh, -on -one, middle of the ring, that's all I want. I'm not asking for nothing more, nothing less, one-on-one. -on -one. Perfect. I appreciate you sitting down with us. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Appreciate it. Jay, uh, this uh, this next interview, um, it definitely uh, it, it's, it gave me chills. We, we've sat across the table from mountains of men. Yeah, big, small, muscular, just big ass dudes. Right. Never have I been so scared in my life. Yeah, I mean, I there there were. I mean, I had like tremors running through my body. Like I, I mean, like I almost broke out into like a nervous sweat. It was such an intimidating thing to be sitting uh, next to Kamikaze. Not uh, Hunter Payne. So, um, I got to tell you, though, man, uh, you know, crazy or not, she's pretty fucking hot. <laughs> well, you know how that hot and crazy right? scale goes. There's a hot crazy but... scale. I mean, like, God, you know, like, like seeing it from, like, afar, she just looked like some, like, psycho. Um, looking at her close, cute psycho. I mean, she, she's still scary psycho. She, yeah, yeah. Great, great talent, though. Oh, definitely. Um, and you know what? Like, we... we I mean, it was it was awesome that you know, using her words, it was our honor to sit down with her. The, the pleasure was all ours. The pleasure was all ours to sit down with the first ever, still current, SCW Women's Champion. Enjoy this scary shit. God, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't make sure, like, if you guys are listening to this late at night, so that flip a light switch on and shit, just to be on the safe side. Tuck your foot in the covers, not hanging off the edge. Because this is like almost boogeyman kind of feeling. Have your mommy on the phone. It was, oh, it was such a, just, oh, God. I, I, I get goosebumps. I, I have goosebumps. I, I don't think my goosebumps ever went away. And this have, has been hours ago. I have ago. goosebumps just thinking about yeah. what they're going to listen to. Ooh. So, good luck to you guys. Um, I, I, hope, uh, I hope we come back. This is probably going to be the most terrifying thing I have ever done on this show. But I, I mean, it is. <laughs> We're going to interview Kamikaze. <laughs> The How pleasure is all yours. I, I, yeah, I'm not and gonna the fear, lie. And I'm the not fear. gonna lie. I, I, I'm honored, but at the same time, my heart is racing because I'm, I'm totally terrified about you. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm a little happy that I'm farther away from her than you are. So yeah. she's gonna get you first. But you should be terrified. It is. I mean, I was. I remember being there when you, uh, when you debuted in SCW, which you won the women's champ, the first ever women's champion. So congratulations on that. Thank that you. Was. Um, it wasn't that hard of an accomplishment, but. It's still my accomplishment. Yeah. So first off, I, I just I want I want our listeners to know who Kamikaze is. Um, like, how how did you end up in SCW? I think that's more of a question you should be asking all of the so-called fans out there who constantly vie for my attention, uh, sending me emails and messages and text messages to my personal my personal communication devices while I'm just outside of the ring trying to live whatever this petty life in this dimension is. They, they just vie for my attention. They cheer, they rant. Look at me, look what I've done. Look at how much I love you when I could care less. And even if you hate me, your attention, it still helps me get stronger. You won't stop interfering with my life you won't stop me. So, so you know what? Let's turn the page. Just keep giving me your attention because you're just making me stronger, you futile little humans. I, it's, you are, without doubt, probably the most terrifying person I've ever uh, sat next to. And I, I interviewed the Half family. person. I, I don't even know what that means. I don't. Right? I don't want I don't, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to get in the head. I don't. Um. So how's it, how's it feel to be at the top of the SCW uh, women's division? And everything. I mean, you've had a lot of great matches uh, through SCW. Was there one competitor that you faced that maybe stuck out the most? That was probably the most challenging for you. Mm, no, the the most challenging challenge I've had in SCW is waiting so long to unearth myself. Well, yeah, when we like I said, we definitely were there with your debut. Uh, you came in. Yes, I don't even know how to like how to how to word it, but like halfway through the match, I guess because I mean you were there the whole. I don't like I can't I, I can't even like articulate the word yeah. on it, 
But I wasn't there for half the match. In fact, Karmakazi has been here since the beginning of time that you can fathom. Well, I, 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 I mean, I just, I don't know. I mean, when it comes to like Moxie Molly and stuff like that, I mean, really, she did most of the work in that match. Ah, laughable. Moxie Molly did the work. <clears throat> Let me tell you about Moxie Molly. Moxie Molly can come in here with her high-pitched voice and her high energy and her bright colors and win the hearts of all you fans. But as I said, Karmakazi has been here since the beginning of time. What you don't realize is when that extraterrestrial ship came to try to abduct what formerly the human Moxie Molly was, when you melded that comic book together, you melded those dimensions, so-called the interdimensional Shiro. When you melded that, you melded me with many more dimensions. You melded me with many more beings. Karmakazi has been feeding off the energy and the excitement and all the cheers and jeers and boos that you've given Moxie Molly and I've just been growing stronger and stronger and stronger, <laughs> finding the perfect moment to unleash myself. So you may say Moxie Molly did all the work, but Karmakazi was here in this body growing and being smart <coughs> and finding the perfect time to come out. So Moxie Molly might be the interdimensional Shiro, the inaugural champ for not one, but two of the Midwest's biggest fighting feds, but Karmakazi knew where the important one was, and Karmakazi chose the perfect time to come out, and Karmakazi is the one with the strength that gave Moxie Molly that guile. So Karmakazi is the one that is the inaugural champion at not one, not two, but three of the Midwest's most premiering feds, and I will continue to gain those championships. Okay, well, you, you mentioned it. Uh, probably the biggest title in the Midwest, in your opinion and everything. You're obviously an SCW fan i'm assuming but uh the weird the weird thing is is uh, and i'm kind of curious about is scw and arw has been having a huge issue with each other to where uh, the scw champion maverick and the scw women's champion kamikaze were at arw show together in a tag team match that you walked out on him can, can you justify that action in any way let's get this straight I chose to be in that match, yes, because the owners and managers of that fed on their knees begged, we need Karmakazi, we need Karmakazi, and okay, Karmakazi is smart. I knew all the cheers I would get because ARW just did not know the <coughs> likes of Karmakazi yet, so me being, you know, the genius that I am went there to just gain popularity and all their energy. That's what you don't get. I take everything that I want, and I take every opportunity I'm given because it's just an opportunity to grow stronger. And let's get one thing straight. I don't need anyone. I can win everything I need to fair and square. I've never had help, and I never will need help. So when I chose to walk out on SCW's heavyweight champ, it's because he's futile and weak. I wasn't going to lose that match for us, and I was going to let him lose that match for us. I choose to do what I want to do, and I take the opportunities that I want. I didn't walk out on SCW, and even if I did, who cares? You'll still cheer for me or boo me, and you'll still make me stronger! Jay, you, uh, you want to... Uh, I, I, I do have a question. Um, Are you quaking in fear because uh, your voice I, I am shit. very much quaking in fear, but... Eventually, you're probably going to have to fight ARW's Women's Champion. I believe we've only seen her once. I do not remember her name, but how do you feel about going into that? It's easy. I've already answered that question. Were you listening this whole time? Yeah, weren't you listening? I take every opportunity that I get, yeah. and I just get stronger and stronger. I get stronger, bro. I, I'm happy I'm so on the side So does it matter table. what her name is, and does it matter what she's done? No, I, I know who I'm backing, so <laughs> it's going to be Karma. Um, if I, you're smart, it is. Well, I appreciate you sitting with us. Um, I, I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm so so. terrified. But thank you. Thank you for being here. The pleasure was all yours. All right. So, uh, oh, God, I hate to say it. The main event. God, yeah. It's the, every, every, every show has a main event. 
event. And of course it does. This, this we we have come we've come to the final interview uh, that we did over at the Southland Championship Wrestling. We yes. we sat down with uh, one of the one of the head trainers of the SCW school. Uh, Southland's the, ass kicker. The yeah, Southland bully. The um, former tag team champ. Former intense uh, superstar Hunter Payne. Ooh, former. You're, you're still talking all this shit. You know what? It, it, oh, here's a, here's the thing. You know, it's I, I, I'm, we're going to dive into the interview in a minute here. Um, I appreciate the fact that he sat down and talked with us. Um, don't appreciate some of the things he said. Uh, not a, not a huge fan of him accusing me of not really uh, having much to say when uh, he rebuttaled some things, but. I want to give him his time because he's a guest on the show and he deserves his time and opportunities. So regardless of his ignorance, I'm ah man, you're you're just looking yeah. to get popped in the mouth. Sure, and you know you, you guys out there, our listeners out there, I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you to really listen to this interview. Uh, again, it's a little bit it's a little bit of a long interview, a little over twenty five minutes that we sat down with Hunter Payne to kind of talk with him about the SCW ARW situation, as well as some of the issues he appears to have with me for no reason whatsoever. Because I did apologize <laughs> last week, but I really want you guys to listen to this interview <clears throat> because there's going to be a point in this interview where Dizzle J uses the term "drinking the Kool Aid" when it comes to me and ARW. I really want you to listen to find out who really is drinking Kool Aid of what company, because. There was a hard. There was one point where it was a little bit difficult to hear Dizzle J muffling his fucking mouth off a of hundred pains ball hole. So do me a favor, go and listen to this show, and then when you can, comment on Facebook in the post below when this show gets released, and let me know. Did DJ drink the juice of SCW? Because I would kind of like some feedback. There's no juice to be had. I just go with the best. That's right, because SCW came and get juice. Ha! <laughs> no juice. That's because they get booze. Because they're men. <laughs> All issues aside between me and Hunter Payne, um, this is a really good interview. Uh, it's nice to kind of get his perspective um, on the ARW SCW situation. Now, we have heard him talk to Greg and stuff about this, more so when it comes to uh, Holiday, but to get the whole aspect of everything, too. A little bit about his uh, how he feels about the key sentinel. And, and we operate on a little more of a rated R type of deal, so he's able yeah. to say a little bit. Oh, yeah. He drops the F-bomb. Really cool. So, um, yeah, no, go ahead and listen to the interview, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as uh, at least twice as much as I know I did not. All right, sitting here with Hunter. Hunter, I'm going to take over this interview because obviously you and T got a little bit of heat going on. So uh, no they, problem. I'm talking to the real guy anyways. Hey, thank you very much for coming out and talking to us. I do appreciate it. Huge sure. fan. Been coming to the show now for almost two years. Been working with us left and right. Um, just got to touch on a few things that are going on right now, the ARW situation, the holiday situation, stuff like that. I'm all yours, man. Whatever you want to ask. Awesome. Just keep uh, this other guy out of it for me, will you? I- I'll do my best. He's a little hard to control. Uh, I don't think I'll have a problem with that. Okay. <laughs> all right, man. So we can just go and jump right into it. Um, so how do you feel about the state of SCW at the moment with everything going on with ARW? And uh, I think the state of SCW is strong. I think it's stronger than ARW, Travis, <laughs> unlike what you might think. Um, what you see and what, what you think you see, I should say, and what's really going on, two completely different things. I think he just hates on us so much that he can't really see what is going on. <laughs> he's so far up the ass ARW and Max Holiday. Drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah, he's drinking the Kool-Aid for sure. <laughs> you know, that he can't really see what's going on. So, I mean, we do have Jay Harris as your Indiana State champion. Right? If I'm mistaken, that is an AIW title. Yeah. Kind of Did he say something? I'm, I'm, he mumbling over here. Um, and he, he said before that there seems to be no unity in the locker room. You had uh, Karmakazi walk off on Maverick Cage. I just, I don't see it. I think there's just some personal issues with that going on. There is. Uh, but the unity, honestly, is, it's tight, dude. I ain't going to lie to you. Um, we're looking forward to putting this ARW thing to rest. I'm looking forward to it because I'm, I'm tired of seeing these guys at the show. I don't know when or how, but it's going to happen. Uh, the Sentinel is doing his best to get to the bottom of everything that's going on. So, <laughs> so speaking about the Sentinel, there's, there's been this movement to put Keith back into power. Um, 
But then I've, I've been hearing there's rumors that Keats was the one that brought ARW in. Keats is 100% of the reason ARW is here. Really? 100% of the reason. Um, and unfortunately, when you have one guy that signs a deal with ARW, there's nothing you can do. You can't back out of it. You can't cancel it. You know what I'm saying? It's not that easy. So ARW is here uh, for how long? I don't know. Um, the Sentinel will get to the bottom of it. I can promise you that. That dude's a hardworking dude. He's a smart dude. He'll find a way to push him out. <laughs> so Hunter Payne, full and back Sentinel. And we, we've talked a lot of the guys today. And, they, and for the majority, it's they back Sentinel. So that, that's great to hear, especially since Keats was a little underhanded with some of the things he had gotten done. And a little? Bringing, okay. Bringing in ARW and now their refs and... I know you've had some issues with old Flat Top. Yeah, Flat Top. I've been waiting for you to kind of lay him out, but I know how it is to lay your hands on a rep. Yeah, I got in trouble for that. Yeah, how, but how, it was, was well it, worth it. How was it striking an old man like that? I mean, just like I mean, according to you, we're close to the same age. So what's the difference, Travis? Yeah, it is true. I guess uh, right. Yeah, it's like a senior. Citizen what's the difference? Man. Never mind. Speed yeah, see? Speaking about strikes. Um, DJ, I told you I'd take care of this guy. Hey, Look, I, all of a sudden, he's got nothing to hey, say. I, I, I he him. sounds much better with his mouth closed, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks cuter, too. But uh, speaking about striking, uh, Little Hunter took a hit from Holiday. How does... Yeah. He, did get um, a little, he did get a little payback, but I'm hoping to be To be cool. completely honest with you... That was a cool hit. I mean, um, come on. Yeah, that was a cool hit. Um, Drop him. Fortunately <laughs> for Max Holiday, I did not see when that happened. Um... For the match, would have it, it would have been out of control the second I saw that. Uh, on the flip side of that, my son can actually handle himself. Which um, was on one of the other shows. Where he's got. 17 years old only, which is fine. But he's you know 5'11". He's 235 pounds. Yeah, he's not house. a little kid. Yeah. Um, he can definitely handle himself. Um, we've had people in the past try to pull him in and take advantage of him to get to me, and it didn't work out in their favor. Uh, I think the same thing is going to happen for Max Holiday. As a matter of fact, mark my words, my son will get payback on Max Holiday. Oh, that's good to hear. I mean, come on, Hunter, really? Really? I mean, come on. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question real quick here. And I apologize for interrupting this because apparently I'm not invited to the party. But you're... You're talking about how your son can handle himself and everything, and yet now you're talking about how, like, maybe daddy has to take care of it for him? Nope, that's not what I... Did I say that, DJ? No, you didn't say that. All I said was, my son will rectify that situation. I'm not saying he's going to go one-on-one with Max Holiday. I, for one, has never said Max Holiday is a pushover. Max Holiday is a beast in that ring. He is. I saw okay. him at the AW match. I saw I him. I found out firsthand. Yeah. I took him a little did. for granted. You did. I ain't going to lie. That dude can bring it. And he brings it. He does. All the credit to him. But he made a mistake by putting his hand on my kid. Now, whether... Well, you got to admit, your kid got involved in something he shouldn't He got involved. He, when he's at a show, he's a fan. He can say whatever he wants right? to Holiday. Holiday got in his face. He didn't get in Holiday's That's face. That's very true. We were sitting right there. We saw it. Yeah. He shoved Holiday. After Holiday got in his face. Oh, come on, dude. I, I get it. You're a dad, and you have to you know protect your son. But, I mean, come on, man. It wasn't... Your, your son would have been better off just sitting down with like a good fan, like a good. So he can't, he can't, he can't be a fan, right? He can't go and scream and yell and cheer for his favorites. He can't boo to people he hates. When you cross a certain line, what line did he cross? You tell me. He he got involved in a match too much because right? Holiday made him involved. Now he, it's Holiday oh. provoked him to the point. Thank you. It, it, it's just like if you were in a fight, if you get provoked to the point, you're you're going to jail just like the other guys. Travis, right? if you're at a soft Southland show. And you're booing me, right? Yeah. And I get in your face. What happened? I just brought you into that show, didn't I? I just brought you in. I mean, it'll, it'll sell tickets if you brought me into your shows, but you don't seem to do it, man. You know, speaking of that, I should charge you for two tickets because you take up two seats. Oh, God. Really? You got to attack the weight, man. That's such a horrible how, thing. How, how much do we charge hashtag FC for? Just curious. Dude, I listen, I, you you know I respect you, man. And again, it's funny because all your comments le- leading into today tells me otherwise. It's very disrespectful. I I made one simple statement that you just don't bring the intensity that you used to, and you completely blew it out of proportion, man. 
I was giving you some constructive I, criticism. I want you to look back at the independent scene over the past 15, 20 years. I'm aging myself, and that's fine. You tell me, you might, there might be a couple. I am one of the most intense dudes you will ever see. Definitely ever. one of the most intense I've seen. You used to be one of the most intense used guys to be. Here I've we ever go. seen. Used like, to be. I'm saying, talks, dude, right? it's, it's one of the things I've been telling you. Like, I saw you in Elite Pro Wrestling. We've talked about that. You were so intense back in the day. You kind of lost that, man. And I don't know what it is. I mean, like, you claim to be the Southland bully, but, I mean, you're not, you're not doing anything. I mean, tell me, tell me how I'm not doing anything, Travis. I beat Starks. I beat Rack. Um, former tag champ. I've held titles all across the Midwest. That's true. You're right? a former tag champ. Yep. But where, where, where's your heavyweight title? Where's your Genesis title? Why, why can't you win the titles on your own? I can win them on my own. The weirdest thing is, too, is like I remember like the, the only reason you kind of got involved with Holiday to begin with is when your own champion lost in eight seconds and you weren't too happy about it. And well, then you get No, I wasn't match. happy about it because it was BS. They took advantage of it. The bell rang. They, they should have been able to use the golden man. ticket on an SCW championship and ARW. It's show. like it's like we just. I mean, we just interviewed uh, one of your uh, one of your little trainees out here. He said the same thing that he got robbed. That Ma- that Maverick got robbed. He didn't get robbed. The bell rang. He wasn't paying attention. Talk to Maverick Cage. He didn't even hear the bell ring. He oh, went God. to go. He went to go put his robe in the corner. Turns around. And he, he gets kicked in the face. So he's not paying attention. He and, no you know what? Hats off the holiday. He took advantage of the situation and he won. He he did That's ex- fine. he did exactly what you did and he took a holiday for granted. And you gotta admit, man, you had a you How do you take someone for granted when he's taking his robe off to get ready to wrestle? And he gets kicked in the face. He didn't, you just said he didn't hear the bell. Who doesn't hear a bell when they're stepping in the ring, man? That's like me staying in the ring with you, expecting not, you know, just to stand there like nothing's gonna happen. It's like me staying in the middle of a it highway. It was a cheap shot. That's all I'll say. It was, it was a, a cheap, cheap shot. shot. It was a cheap it shot. It wasn't a cheap they, shot. He man. still should have been able to cash in an ARW golden ticket on an SCW, on a CW title. That, that doesn't make sense. So why did it happen? It, Sentinel was there and he could have stopped it. That's the biggest problem people have with Sentinel. When he does make decisions, they're crap. Well, it, apparently it's the, not crap. Here, here's the problem. He didn't know the extent of what was going on with ARW as far as contracts and everything else was concerned. So that is why he made the rematch at the following SCW show. And when those two went head to head, what happened? That cage won. Thank you. I and mean, this is stuff that was I mean, a straight up Keats. match. Yeah. And this is just all fallout from Keats. You know what I love? Run this when we spit truth at Travis, yeah. all of a sudden he's got nothing to say. Not, not anymore. Not a, not a fucking word. <laughs> so. Touch on that. T delivered what he said was a heartfelt apology on our last show. How did you feel about it? A heartfelt apology? Are you, yeah. Did you hear what I heard? Uh, I apologize. I, I, I heard that was a bullshit apology. Hey, where I come from, that apology gets you punched in the mouth. I, I, I agree, which is why you're saying that gets, to him and not me. It gets punched in the mouth. Far I, from an apology. I, I said I was sorry for hurting your feelings. I, well, my feelings, you couldn't hurt my feelings, Travis, if you tried. I, mean, I felt like I did. You can I insult mean, me. God. And that's what I feel you're trying to do. You, you got very sensitive about it. I got very sensitive. I just, yep. I, maybe. I mean, it, it just sounds like you're backtracking since you got smoked on Facebook. Is that what it is? <laughs> it sounds like. Yeah, am I backtracking? Yeah. Because I'm the Kool Aid drinker for ARW. Yeah, you're the, definitely. Kool Aid drinker, Kool-Aid drinker Kool-Aid juice drinker. It's, just, yeah. it's, it's logic when you guys just look at it. I mean, I'm sorry. Like I and like I said, I love SCW. SCW is a great company. That's why I like going to the shows. That's why I root for. You know the guys in the and you know in the matches, but the problem is, is like ARW kind of walked in and they took over. They you you this allowed all put in by Keats, but Keats isn't here anymore, and yet the referees are still involved in SCW matches, which I don't understand. Why. Hey, listen, I listen to your mm-hmm. podcast. You know how long it takes DJ to clean up your mess when you do these podcasts? I mean, it's not easy clean to clean up, up someone's mess. Clean up, that's all right. right, this dude. It's not easy to clean Come up on. someone's mess. Come on. We, even when we do the podcast here, it's just Believe like, me when I like, tell well, you, this whole disagree. ARW, SCW situation will be rectified. It It'll is. It'll be taken care of. It is. But the thing is, and what people keep failing to realize, is it doesn't you know, necessarily mean that ARW and SCW are going to you know, rectify it with an SCW coming up on top. Because SCW... I think it's inevitable that SCW it comes won't, up on top. Because I agree with you, DJ. Of course you agree with it. 
All he does is shove his head up everyone in SCW's oh, I'm ass. I'm sorry, I'm not choking on KB's dick about ARW. Okay? <laughs> you you, know, you, you, you sit there and you're like, well, I don't know what you have to say, but I love SCW. I love SCW too, but it's the reality of how everything works, man. Yeah, you, you can't sit there and say, and it doesn't matter because they're going to be Outside of Max Holiday, which you seem to love, which is fine. Yeah, he's a good guy. Who else Mr. is going to take us out? Machine. B.O.W. Uh, uh, last time I checked, uh, did you Machine and Machine and Starks and Executioners came in for the very first time, and Mulligan and Marche just kind of took it to them. Everyone has a good day, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, you you you've already taken out B.O.W. once or few twice. Times before. Yeah, we've we've had our run-ins. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so Listen, man, I'm not saying that anyone on the A.R.W. roster is a pushover because they're not. This is wrestling. I respect everyone that steps in the ring. Anyone can win or lose on any given, any given day, right? But you're 100% wrong to say there's no unity. You're 100% wrong to say I'm not bringing the intensity. You're 100% wrong. But I'm not because you're not bringing the intensity, man. You know what? I mean, all I could, all I could tell you, Travis, is wait and see, my man. I, I wish I wish I could be proven wrong, but I mean, there's just there's no there's, there's no there's. I, can I tell I, you, it's just a matter of time before SCW it just takes the whole show over. Let me let me let me tell you something. You touched on my son, all right? If someone hit your son, wouldn't that piss you off a little bit? I figured I'd raise my son better to not get involved in shit. It's not supposed to be involved in. Well, I mean, maybe I mean, a, looking maybe? at you and seeing how you are, your son probably wouldn't hit anybody to begin with, but that's okay. My son's not point. afraid, okay? My son's not afraid uh, of anybody, as he shouldn't be. But he also shouldn't be attacked when he goes to a wrestling show to watch his father wrestle. Maybe he should be raised better. Oh, then to go watch me wrestle? What? I, right. It's true. Right. I, I'm just saying, and from a father's perspective, my son or daughter is even out in the ring and see something happen to me. They're going to react. Correct. Whether they react in the right way or the wrong way, they're still going to react. They shouldn't get involved. That's, that's, he that's, didn't get involved, Travis. I don't know what the fuck you're seeing, dude. He was watching <laughs> as a spectator. A spectator. Okay. Okay. Holiday got in his face. Go watch, go watch the video, man. I mean, I'm sorry. Your, your kid your kid shoved Holiday and he got smacked. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, he did get smacked. You some, know what? Sometimes kids need to be disciplined. I don't and know he lives to it. tell about it. God. And to get his revenge. He'll get Max Holiday. I promise you that. That's all I'm going to say. He'll get Max. I hope he doesn't because he doesn't need to go through that. Poor kid. So, now that you've fought the bearded bastard, is your strategy set to destroy him? Um, the story of Max Holiday and Hunter Payne is far from over. Okay. Um, yeah, you could chuckle, Travis. That's fine. You could chuckle. Um, I mean, before I, before I wrestle Max, why don't you try and soften me up? I just I, we get the, you get the ring right back here. We got the training ring here? Hell, you, I, I could wrestle you before I wrestle Holiday the same day. I'm at Wood, but I didn't bring my gear. And, I mean, you just... I mean, you, you yeah, must, your ass hurts, you right? Tired. I mean, I just, your jaw yeah. might be hurting from flapping yeah. your gums all the time. It's a long day. Right? What? Yeah. <laughs> Next time. That's Next what I time. thought. Next time. Next time. Right. The, the door's open. You can come here anytime you want. And here's, here's one promise I'll make. You won't walk out of here. You'll probably be crawling. Out of here. Maybe I could borrow your walker and uh, that'll help me get up. Maybe. Kane, walker, what do you want to use? I got a scooter. You want to use a scooter? It's a, obviously, you and Max are going to meet again probably a few more times. In order for it not to be a no contest like the last one, what do you think the stipulation is going to have to be between you two to have that clear winner? Uh, you've seen what happened at the last you seen what happened the last time Max oh, and yeah. I wrestled? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know that there's a venue in the area that can contain Max and I. Um, there's obviously a hatred for each other. Um, it's like King Kong versus Godzilla type of deal right there. Yeah, I'm King Kong and Godzilla, so there you go. Um, I can see that. Fake as shit. I don't, what will it take? Uh, false count anywhere. Uh, street fight, because... With Max and I, it could honestly spill anywhere. I mean, there is truly a hatred there. Yeah, that, so, I mean, and it's not up to me if that match ever happens again. That's up to 
the president to sign whatever he, it is he signs, or it's up to ARW to sign whatever they sign. I, I, but I all I got to tell either one of them is be careful what you sign, you know, because it's liable to get up. I'm hoping it gets ugly because that's that's what it seems like you're at your best. You know what I mean? I, I, I do believe you bring the intensity. I do believe that you were just Southland's <laughs> ass, ass kicker, Southland's enforcer through and through. And I am, I, and I take that to heart. Yeah. It's I awesome. truly take that to heart. I wear my emotions on my sleeve when it comes to Southland Championship Wrestling. And, and not everybody, obviously, is going to agree, but True. only the smartest people will. And you're a smart dude, DJ. Yeah, and, and you also. God, he's such a kiss-ass man. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did, 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 did you say ass. something over there? You're such a I don't think ARW. You know, this show goes kid. so good. I, I listen to your guys' podcasts. I ain't going to lie. I'm a fan, right? Thank you. It sounds so much better when he's not talking. I I, I agree. No, it's not true. You should take the reins of the podcast and just have him mumble. It sounds, like mumble? He's, it sounds like he's chewing beef jerky or something, you know, all the time. That's what I, that's what I hear when I hear Travis yeah, But it's, it's his strongest part he's got is his mouth. So. I noticed. Yeah. Or his, or his, his keyboard. He is a keyboard he's warrior. A keyboard warrior. Yes, he is. He's a keyboard tough guy. Tough guy, I'll take <laughs> Even if it's a keyboard tough guy, right? Tough guy, keyboard I'll tough I'll guy. At least I know who I am. I mean, I don't lie. Softland bowl. Travis, I know who I am. I offered you a chance to prove me wrong. I, I'm not wrestling, man. You should you should offer, you know, to prove someone wrong to someone who knows how to wrestle. And maybe, I do that. I do that every month. Maybe not wrestle the smallest guy in the family. I mean, what the That's fuck? who the family threw at me. What do you want me to do? Fight someone better. Except I'll do an open challenge. Do something more, man. I mean, come on. I mean, there really hasn't been anybody he hasn't beat already in SCW. And now, there's so, there's so many other people you take on SCW other than the Patrick Tell me. family. Tell me. Blaylock is a good up and comer. Maybe he should get an opportunity, you know. I mean, unfortunately, like I told him, and I'll be honest. To, to be honest with you, Blaylock, I'm not a title holder. Blaylock should be flourishing and going after the Genesis title. My thoughts. Yeah. What's he going to step up and challenge me for? The kid can get hurt. When are you going to defend the chi- or, uh, fight for the Genesis title? I'm not worried about titles. I'm worried about defending SCW right now. Yeah, you're, uh, That's my biggest thing. You seem like the only one, though, man. The only know. one what? The only That's true. You got Angus has been defending. Uh, oh, fucking James Angus. Green. Angus and I are on Angus? separate ends of the spectrum, but Angus. Fucking Angus, Mr. Uncool himself, Angus McDuff. And you got these guys. He what? brings it every show. Yeah. When you wrestle, I wrestled Angus not too long ago. When you wrestle yeah. Angus, you know you wrestled Angus. He puts a hurting on you. I guess, but I mean, you, you guys did put on a hell of a match like a couple months back. I, I do remember that. I believe we voted a match tonight for our yeah. podcast. And he lost like a lot of the other matches he's in, but that's cool. Um, you can fight the Sheik. I don't understand why he feels that he needs to be part of this whole feud thing, but whatever. I mean. That's my biggest problem, man. It's like you talk about unity and stuff, but you have a very small group of people that are backing you. I mean, shit. I had the entire SCW locker room. Your own, your own SCW women champion doesn't give a shit about the company, man. Come on. She walked out on your heavyweight champion. In fact, your heavyweight champion. They had a disagreement. <laughs> it happens. It's because there's no unity. No, there's unity. <sighs> Believe me when I tell you, you'll be choking on your words. I'm sure you know a thing too about choking, because I'm sure you put a lot of food down that gullet, right? I can honestly say I never choked in my life, Hunter. Uh, I, I bet Other than that KB's dick. <laughs> who? <laughs> KB. If you, if you don't know who he is, you must not be an ARW fan. ARW player. fan, yeah. I, I, just, I forgot you were talking for a minute. Oh. God. See, the unity comes. Sometimes you just need that coach to go back there, give that halftime talk. Who? Who's that coach? Who? Right here, Hunter. They're talking to him. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. Southland's ass kicker, that too. At least someone sees it. You got dudes over here buying you and shit. Like, okay, just go nuts. Yeah, man. Cool, coach. Man, oh man. Really must not taste that good no more. I just, it does, it, like, nothing makes sense to me. I'm sorry. It's just like, it, I mean, you say yourself on Facebook, you have an army coming, but like, like where, where the fuck's his army? Hey. I mean, come on, man. I mean, like, there's there's a whole lot of like, you'll wait and see. You're gonna, I, you know, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Like, but you're not, man. I mean, come on. The last time when you... it's all said and done, 
believe me when I tell you, Travis, you'll be choking on your words. I know. I, I'm sorry. I, I promise see you. I, I just see now. You know what? And when that happens, there's no room left for you on the SCW bandwagon. Zero room. Because there's only one seat you require to. Okay? So I, I, I guess I... I'm sorry for being honest. That's, that's on me. That, that is on hey, me. Hey, your opinion... You're entitled to your opinion. And I, don't, right. I don't begrudge you for that. I, I would hope not. But your opinion's wrong. It's not wrong, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, opinions are God awesome. bless you, DJ, for dealing with this guy hey, every week, too, man. man. Hey, you know, I'm telling you. To deal with this guy every week, you got to be a saint. I'm pretty close. Pretty close. I got the white hat. Shit. You yes. got to get there early, though, to get the sandwiches, because I'm sure by the time you get there, they're gone. <laughs> he usually cooks a pretty decent meal. Yeah. I, I can tell. Ah. I can tell. It's okay, Travis. I mean, I, I, I get it. Cat's got your tongue down and shit like that, but, you know, you're, you're going to eat your words. I agree with him. SCW is going to stand tall. ARW is going to be a mere blip. In the past. There'll be a pimple on my ass. It's it's better that maybe I do tone down what I'm saying because I don't want somebody to overreact and take their day out on me. So again, hey, as I mentioned last week, I Travis, apologize. I know what you're trying to do, right? I know what you're trying to do. You know me, and you know I have a tendency to fly off the handle, Back in right? The day, yeah. Yep. Um, you're really pushing my buttons to do that. But what I'm not going to do is exactly what you want me to do. All right? I'm not going to fly off the handle. But I'm going to tell you this. Shut your fucking mouth. All right? You don't know what goes on in SCW locker room. You don't know that SCW is one strong unit. And you have no idea what's coming down the pipeline for ARW. Believe me when I tell you I have a tendency of pulling people in. And SCW is going to pull one over on ARW like you've never seen before. Never seen before. All right. And when that happens and I see Travis sitting in the front row crying, DJ laughing, I know I got you. It's going to be a great day. It's always a great day oh, yeah. when he doesn't say a fucking word. Definitely. I'm done. Well, I'm done. Like, you know, you got that bag of beef jerky there? Just keep chewing it. You sound much better when you're chewing the beef jerky than you are talking. That's cool. I... Hunter, this has been freaking amazing. So thank you very much. I hope to sit down with you again. We're getting... Anytime you guys want. I should say anytime you want. Yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll dive a little more back in your history with the next interview. Right now, we just want to stay a little current. Um, again, thank you for having access to the students and everything else. You guys, you guys are, you, honestly, you guys are welcome here anytime. Um, just have him wear his headphones and yeah, do I, what he does. I'm and a ball gag or my something. guys, yeah, my guys will talk to you with no problem. I oh, appreciate um, it so I'll much. put the gag order on Travis over here. Nobody needs to talk to him. Yeah. Because obviously he's, he's here, but he's not a fan of us. He doesn't like us. He thinks we're getting our ass kicked. That's fine. He's entitled to his opinion. We see things differently. Uh, when it's all when the smoke is cleared, uh, you know nothing is guaranteed in life except for death and taxes. But I can promise you, SCW will do the best to take on the ARW. Oh, definitely. And I, like I said, I fully believe that you're going to be staying up there with the SCW flag at the end of it all. And you know what? And if Travis is lucky, maybe I'll have him hold one end of it. Maybe you can have him hold one end. Just, just to feel part of it. Maybe I'll put it on him so he feels like Superman for a minute. Ooh. I'm pretty sure I'm busy. Hurricane Elvis so. is ass, yeah. Things going on, so it'll, uh, it'll be fine. If it, uh, if it means anything to you, uh, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Travis, you couldn't hurt my feelings if you tried. You need to understand that. Hurt my feelings, you're not. Insulting me, you are. And when people insult me, it pisses me off. Great point. All right? Um, yeah. No, you're right. I, I'm sorry. When was the last time you were punched in the mouth? I could tell it's been a while because you're you're running your 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 yapper like it's no one's business. I promise you, one shot from me, your jaw will probably be wired shut, and then you could you could run solo for a while. That'd be I, great. I, I could run solo. And you know what the best part about that is? He'd be eating through a fucking straw. Okay, we gotta, we gotta wrap this up. Uh, we gotta 
Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying think, to wrap it up, but you keep talking shit. That, but I, I, think that, yeah. I would love to see him eat his grilled steak out of a straw. I, that would be fucking hilarious. i like to see him use a blender. I don't know if that goes with the line of the keto. But, again, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Not a problem, you. brother. Anytime. Any, uh, you want to say goodbye or anything? Any parting shots, Travis? No. Okay. I'm good. I'm yeah, good. So, the Hunter Payne interview, the main event, was freaking phenomenal. It was awesome. I got, I got to say, it is cool to um, give someone like that a platform to talk on because, obviously, when you get to, uh, get to a certain point in the age and stuff, people kind of cast you aside and stuff. So, it's nice to ah. help them out. It's nice to help them out there. I feel, you're, you're out of your mind. Yeah, sure. You're, you're the same guy that probably would have put Ric Flair down in his 40s. Well, yeah. I would put Ric Flair down in training. In training? Yeah. Fuck that guy. No, I'm kidding. I love Ric Flair. You guys, um, I hope you enjoyed listening to all the interviews as much as we enjoyed doing them. Uh, we had an opportunity to be at uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis School, Genesis Martial Arts, uh, during the SCW uh, training and everything. So if you're sitting there wondering, like, what's all this banging and clanging going around in the background? It's because we were actually on location at the school all day today. Getting oh, interviews. man, it was awesome. Um, and you know what? When it comes to wrestling fans like us, spending all day in wrestling is probably one of the biggest uh, excitements that we have. Oh, definitely. I mean, marky, marky, mark, mark, mark. Absolutely. So I hope you guys enjoyed them. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, SCW does have a show, uh, Meltdown, next Saturday, July 27th. July 27th. Uh, in Shabance, uh, door opens at 6, bells at 7. You can pre-buy your tickets for $10 at Genesis Martial Arts or fit by you, $12 at the door. We gave you the match card. You guys know what's up. We are going to talk about it again next week and do our predictions for the matches and everything. And, uh, hey, by the way, before I, uh, before I forget and before we say our goodbyes, guys, make sure you check out Audible.com, a official sponsor of the uh, podcast. Because because of uh, Audible.com and uh, their relationship with uh, JFW, they're uh, giving and offering up a 30-day free membership of Audible. Uh, thousands of uh, titles to choose from, uh, cornucopia of wrestling uh, books out there that you guys could get with a free credit they offer you for the first 30-day free trial and everything. And all you got to do is go to audibletrial.com backslash freaknet, sign up today. It is so easy to do. And uh, I, I, I have it and I love it. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy um, it thoroughly. Yeah. Also, if you, uh, if you guys get an opportunity and you want to get some exclusive and awesome GFW merchandise, you got to go to T-E-P-B-L-I-C.com, search GFW, pick up your merchandise because our logo is on everything now. And it's available for you to purchase at tpublic.com just by searching GFW. Awesome. Right. Want to talk about your pick of the week real quick? My pick of the week. So, I, I was excited about this. We had talked about this match, I believe. It was like a year and a half a ago. A year and a half ago on the show. And, it, yeah. and for whatever reason, it popped up on my Facebook feed on somebody else's. Yeah. The Great Muda mm-hmm. versus Hulk Hogan. Now, if you're just a WWE, WCW Hulk Hogan guy, this match is going to blow your freaking mind. Because yeah. he actually has more than, he doesn't even, I don't even think he wins with the leg drop. If he even wins. We Don't give about spoilers. It. Spoiler. <laughs> Check it out. You're going to see him with this incredible, just doing things you've never seen Hogan yeah. do if you haven't seen him outside WCW or WWE or WWF, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's uh, the the uh, pick of the week obviously gets drops on our Facebook every single uh, Saturday. Uh, all you got to do is go to JW Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, but we're also on Twitter and Instagram at JW Podcast. And let your friends know. Friends, your fans, your your peeps that you know who love wrestling, have them listen to the show. You can search JW Podcast or Just Freaking Wrestling. You search on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, um, Podbean. Just by searching YouTube. We're on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us and start following us because in a couple short months, videos are going to be downloaded. And hey, you know what? Let me talk about Patreon for a minute before I forget about that. And we really got to get going. But uh, Patreon, uh, Many different tiers that offer you many different prizes and stuff. Uh, plus, two different tiers that offers additional podcasts that come out every month. You can either listen to us do a watch-along uh, to a pay-per-view that's on the Network. Or you can listen to some of our uh, discussions and research reports on some 
dark uh, the dark side the of dark wrestling. side of wrestling uh conspiracies um and shit like that it's really cool it's that Patreon. it's your chance to be an investor into a groundbreaking right, show right you guys you guys are contributing to the podcast in return we're going to give you some amazing stuff plus additional content and you can be just as cool as general league and dewey decimal two of our great patrons so shout out to brandy shout out to becca for being part of the patreon we couldn't Thank do it without you, you. That's right. And all you gotta do is go to patreon.com backslash JFW podcast and become a patron today. That's all I got. Time to ring the bell on this episode. Perfect. As always, I am Travis. I'm Dizzle J. And thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freaking Listen, the JFW podcast. Peace.